This is Brother Ron, and welcome to We All Be News Radio and TV, the news free Dixie for the 21st century. Black Rose. Yes. Yeah, okay. So I got Black Rose and Dr. Short here with me on We All Be uh, Radio. And, you know, we're just trying to close out the year. I mean, 2020 is rapidly approaching. And uh, always held, it's always good to hear a good word from a good doctor about what's going on, giving us a prognosis about the current state of black America and world affairs and what is to be expected in the very, very near future. How are you doing tonight, doctor? Okay. Well, it's all good here. I'm kind of, I want to wish everybody a ho, ho, ho. Just don't, just don't be one with all these diseases out here. Okay. So, all right. All good. Yeah, in your spirit, but not in your body. Okay. So I hear some kind of uh, stuff in the background, doctor. I want to make sure everybody can hear you because you got so much important stuff to say. So... Well, first and foremost, I want to thank you for introducing me to Anna Shearer, a black girl. So introducing me to Judge Joe Brown. We have a lot of fun educating people. And I don't know, we've, we've, we've become the bad boys of independent black media. Um I can't say it's true, but I, I really do believe Professor Black Truth heard that thing we did on Oprah because he said, so, you know, we don't joke. <laughs> he made a, a, he took a dig at Oprah being fat. I think I, I claim some of the credit for that. I feel kind of proud when, when you hear people doing stuff that you know is what you normally do that they normally don't do. So that's kind of fun. But, uh, yeah, so thanks for introducing me to Judge Joe Brown. If Who's we can, the greatest? Yeah, I'm hoping that Val and them will take me on as an assistant or an associate producer because I think that platform could reach a million people a week if uh, if we think differently about it, you know, um, One of the struggles is people want to be popular, and being popular these days with black folks, where our values are, are not always the right thing, you know? You may be unpopular, but be influential. It's better to reach 100,000 people and really do something than reach 2 million and nothing happen. We've got... Fox TV and a lot of things that reach millions of black folks every day, and it's not doing anything for us. Now, Devil and Shadow Sister, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Dr. Randy Short, go ahead. I believe that Tariq and the enough. nobody has to be a saint or perfect, but Tariq and others are making a major contribution. If nothing else, I'm going to get people to pay. And so I think Judge Judge could go there. Judge could be a an elder, a serious elder. And uh, to me, I don't mind being an apprentice, learning from other people. And maybe when I get my 70s, maybe I'll qualify. I mean, yeah, definitely Judge thinks very highly of you. He spoke very highly of you tonight. And I had a chance to talk to him earlier. And also, I want to give a shout out to Sister Valerie Denise Jones for the uh, Judge Brown Show platform. I really mm-hmm. enjoy hearing you on that on a consistent basis, and people are really enjoying that because, like I told you, when I be in public, I have middle aged black women talk about you and see, you know, they be hushed tones. That Dr. Short is something else. He's very provocative, and they really enjoy what you got to say. I mean, he's like middle class black women. You know, uh, you know, they are part of bureaucracy, but they really enjoy 
hearing the things you have to I say love my people, about man. stuff. I love mm-hmm. my people. It's not a hate thing. I hate ignorance. And I was preaching today to our fellowship, but Cheryl didn't make the call. <laughs> but we were just talking about scoffers and people that believe in nothing and how they mess up things. And, you know, we need to read Psalms 1 uh, or Proverbs 1 to learn about scoffers. And we have a lot of scoffers within our ranks and then racist of scoffers or scoffers and, and sinners and so forth. But in a nutshell, I believe that there's hope for our people. There's a bright future for black folks here and now and in the hereafter. We just have to do some things very differently, sort of like uh, what you do. With, with There are a lot of people doing the right thing in our community. We just don't have the critical mass yet for people doing that. And I think as times get a little more pressing, it's going to happen, right? Um, If things were different, I would be a frustrated black professor at a school with students that don't want to read, that don't want to know. I have to worry about my few motivated students and whether I'm going to get fired because I'm actually trying to teach under somebody else's control. And I'm so glad on a certain level it's cost me everything. But the good thing about being kicked out of the economy controlled by other people is I'm in the process of setting up an LLC and maybe another LLC and a a 501c3 and other things and maybe a CDC if I can get something moving, a community development corporation. Uh, in Baltimore, and and perhaps a historical preservation society and create uh, several things, and I'll be the boss. And therefore, if I'm proud to be black, and or if I say to my young brothers, please don't come with your pants falling off your behind. I say to the young women, keep your lesbianism at home. I don't care if you're lesbian, but do you have to chase girls in class and everyone see it. I mean, that's fair. And I could get fired somewhere for asking someone to simply be who they are when they're in their own space. So it's been good for me. So you're hearing from me. And a lot of people who I guess appreciate what I'm sharing would not know if I were in the economy like a lot of other people who have to work and have to worry about if they say something that's true, will they be fired? You know, it's it's really an insane time where you you say God made man and woman and you're fired from a job. And mm-hmm. and you could be at a Christian school and all of a sudden doing what everyone's done for thousands of years is wrong within the last few years. But that's okay. Um I, I'm telling you, uh, and I want everybody to understand this, but just some basic numerology for you. 20 plus 20 equals 40. 40 in Hebraic gematria represents major change or the shifting of a generation or a major event. And that's all throughout the Bible. Uh, Paul got beaten 39 times. They, they laid off one. They only beat you 40 but they usually lay off on the last one because of the port to the number 40. Jesus got beat 40, 39 times, right? And mm-hmm. if you think about 40 years ago, we had the big gay march in D.C., a half million gays came. 40 years later, uh, we're going to go into an era of uh, throat cancer, anal cancer, and uh, what I call pharmaceutical homophobia. Uh, which has been going on for a while, but this is the 40th year of pharmaceutical homophobia writ large, where they're deliberately killing people who are LGBTQ with drugs that they know aren't safe, all the while telling them how much they love them and this, that, the other. But uh, remember, we're talking about the gay birth control pill. We've been talking about this for years, Truvada. Mm. And mm. There's, there are a bunch of them. Uh, it makes people's bones break. It, it destroys their kidney. It destroys their health. and uh, and so you're seeing a lot of people get cancer and so forth, and a lot of this has to do with the generations of this last 40 years of people doing whatever they wanted to, and it catches up. 
So we're headed towards a reset for a lot of things. And um, it's going to be both exciting and difficult. You're going to see new leadership. In fact, uh, I had tried to get Valerie Jones to do a show on John Lewis for Friday. Mm-hmm. John Lewis had been on my mind, uh, you know, uh, and Valerie had Umar instead, uh, <laughs> whatever that is. Anyway, um, and see how John Lewis is in the news today. Mm. And my sense was John Lewis's news, and okay, she's a millennial. They 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 have to understand the perspective of a person that's lived almost twice as long as you have is it's different, and it may actually be right even if it doesn't make sense to you. And um, it's like a program I did for um, Schoon. Schoon called me up and went off for me about talking about Nancy Pelosi on his show. Remember the second interview? Mm-hmm. And I said to him, Schoon, when you make really good interviews, they may miss it at first. It's like a sleeper record. Most people don't realize that, um, well, good song. Jimmy Mack, Jimmy Mack, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Mack, when you're coming back, was recorded maybe in 1963. And no one even, right? Mm. And someone found that like four years later, says, this is a hit. And they released it, it was a smash. And people couldn't believe that something that they saw is, right? It's the same mm-hmm. thing. I heard it through the grapevine, if you know the story. But I heard it through the grapevine. It was recorded by Marvin Gaye before, I think, Gladys Knight was done. Mm-hmm. And Barry Gordy, uh, and, and the, uh, what's this thing called? Quality Control People said that Marvin Gaye's I Heard It Through the Grapevine wasn't a hit. Hmm. And they refused to release that song. Can you believe that? Well, and mm-hmm. and what's his name? Oh. It'll come to me in a second. No, I was, was, I was no thinking about was, Otis Redding with respect. He wrote that song, Respect, and he sung it, and then Aretha made it, took it to the next level. Yeah, she so that was his song. Level. That was his but song. I'm, but, but I'm saying people who had something and everybody said no. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of, and the reason I use this, everybody knows popular music, like uh, uh, There Goes My Baby, um, Atlantic Records did not want to release that song by the Drifters. Interesting. Wow. They said no. And this is not they they right. And what it's trying to say to Curtis is Curtis, you may not hear it, and maybe even the people that hear it don't hear it, but once it goes out there, someone's gonna say I told them, when Nancy Pelosi becomes a major news figure, which she will, I told them this impeachment stuff's gonna happen if I do it. Once people start talking about Nancy Pelosi all the people who heard it on your show says, what is this dude talking about this little Italian broad that doesn't matter to us, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to go back and say, this is a dude saying her father went all the dope coming to kill black people in Baltimore. And then they'll come back and send that to other people. And they'll say, thank you, brother, for putting that out there when it wasn't hot. But it was. it needed to be said. And I said, that's good programming. Then someone will come back six months later and say, I got to hear that again. Or Pelosi, I have someone he mentioned that to, right? And that's mm. the same thing with, uh, with what we do or what we're doing, as long as we're putting real stuff out there. But anyway, um, I, I was saying all that to say, John Lewis, <sighs> well, I've been praying for God to get him out of that office. I literally had talked someone into running against John Lewis. I was on the phone with one of the kings because we're trying to get someone to get John Lewis a seat. So literally, I just promised to help someone before I got the news to help them get John Lewis out. So uh, this is all in keeping with the fact that I began praying two weeks ago, but I've been praying all year about John Lewis and the year before that uh, this has to stop. What he and other people are doing to us have to stop. And however God does it, I won't tell you what I prayed for, but the news today seems like God sure heard me because I said, God, expedite. 
The man will be 80, February 21st. He's a uh, oh, four, three score, and ten. Actually, he's lived four score almost. Now, he's a rich man, and everybody knows him. He's got the Congressional Medal of Freedom. He's got every single solitary award he could dream of. He's outlived his wife by ten years. Um, hey, your grandfather, great-grandfather, unless his son is just like him. Um, what, I mean, what... You've got all these books and documentaries and monuments and scholarships, but what about us, huh? And uh, the thing that really ate me, which is what I was trying to get down to jump on uh, over, what, two weeks ago, was that uh, John Lewis wants an honor for uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi was, was gay. Gandhi hated black people's guts intently. Gandhi was responsible for the mass murder of uh, the Dalit black Indians. Uh, Gandhi supported apartheid in South Africa, just not for Indians. So it's okay for black people to be oppressed and murdered and ripped off and raped. Uh, Gandhi had admirers who were in his circle that were admirers of Adolf Hitler. Uh, Gandhi was a pedophile. Gandhi was a misogynist. And Gandhi was a Hindu for me who felt that uh, my religious beliefs were a sham. So for me, a so-called Christian minister to put the person with that record to be honored is the truth. And uh, I've said this to our Rita King, and if I tell any of the King family that they need to stop giving sanctuary and... Uh, and a good image to the, the the Aryan Brahmins that mass murder the black Indians. And yes, I say that the King family, by pretending that Gandhi was this great humanitarian, are complicit in whitewashing the mass murder, the enslavement, the mass rape, the lynchings, the communal violence that occurs all over the Indian subcontinent. Yes, I'm blaming the King family. They need to get out of hosting and celebrating Gandhi. And Martin Luther King, according to a hoodie Roy, a white, or should say an Indian white skin, they're all saying Dr. King is greater than Gandhi. You know who says Gandhi is greater than Dr. King? Pardon my language. Dumb fuck southern black folks living in Atlanta. I won't say the last name. It's outrageous that the people in India now saying King is greater than Gandhi. And you got black folks who were told by white liberals that, you know, you should downplay King and play up this Indian that didn't even think black folks were human. You know, somebody needs to pop some of them side the head. Tell them I said it. Um, well, they I, do have a statue at the King Center of Gandhi, right? They still got yeah, and, then, yeah. and they have homeless black people outside the King Center, too. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, Bernice King, it should be there instead of Bern. Bernice King. Um, they make, they're really, along with John Lewis, if he should pass before his uh, 80th birthday, it will represent a complete change. He's the last one of the big six. And I told Alveda King in 2018 after April 2018, 50 years after Dr. King was assassinated, that the King family would uh, be under scrutiny like they'd never been before if they didn't really do right by black folks. So if they want to, you know, basically uh, treat um, Dr. King's casket like it's a roulette wheel at a casino, it's going to cost them. And they hung Harry Belafonte out to dry. He was beating them. I mean, there's some real issues with this civil rights crew. It's a lot of selfishness, finality, self-hatred. You know, I was talking to someone, and uh, they asked me, was the murder of the girls in Birmingham a sacrifice? Mm. With the four little girls, a sacrifice 
to the boule. He asked me this. And I said, unfortunately, as much as I admire both uh, Martin and A.D. Alfred Daniel King, mm-hmm. we murdered those four little girls and two little boys who were shot to death outside the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, on, um, was it August 28th, 1963, I think. I, I think I had the right date. If I'm off, that's all right. What we do know, and it's a fact, that a man by the name of Roosevelt Tatum told the King family, Martin Luther King and A.D. King, he had seen the Birmingham Police Department put dynamite in in his brother's front yard. And the Kings left this man hang out to dry. This man got put in jail and harassed and run out of Birmingham, died young, up in Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. Had the uh, Kings and the others been willing to confront the police were involved in the bombing and killing of black people and forced this, it would save those little girls and those little boys and a whole lot of other people because it would have put the uh, FBI and other people and exposed all this police murder and terror of black people. And uh, these people, getting their communistic advice and their white liberal advice, decided to let that black man be destroyed. I think his life mattered just as much as Dr. King or A.D. King or any of the kings. Mm -hmm. I I, I hope you... I'm not knocking the contribution. You never hear me trash Dr. King's commitment. But in this instance, they made a compromise and they sacrificed those girls, those boys, and Roosevelt Tatum and whatever his family could have been Mm -hmm. had he kept his mouth shut. And that is a bloody stain, and the blood pours all over the King family. And there are other people who got hung out to dry, who spoke up and stood up, and they were destroyed by the involvement of the movement. They didn't get rich. They don't have a King Center. They don't get to sell books. They don't get to charge millions of dollars for people to hear a speech. And I'm not against them getting it. I'm only saying that it's a selfish narcissistic, capricious, covetous spirit in this thing. And it putrefies whatever the, the movement could have been. Roosevelt Tatum should have a government pardon. The King family should ask for it. Little chunky uh, Martin King was putting this little, Martin III putting this door out there to sneak at the no guns march. Silly, we need guns. Same way he needs some you know, weed on his head. Look, the ball spots don't look good on him. Um, I can't imagine Dr. King ball headed. Could you? Yeah, I do. Well, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It depends on the type of head shape he has. Like his head is. No, no, Come Junior, right? You're talking Dr. King Junior, yeah. right? Yeah, Martin Luther King Junior. No, you couldn't imagine ball headed. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking him. about it now. That's what I'm thinking mm-hmm. about. <laughs> now, can you imagine? Oh my God, that'd be interesting. You imagine Dr. King with a ball head. Cora, get me a hat to put on my head. It's kind of cold outside. So I'm ready to march. I just don't want my head cold. <laughs> Can you imagine? No, but you know what I was thinking about when you were saying about the poor little girls? You know, the fifth little girl survived, Sarah uh, Collins yeah, Rudolph. I were blinded. But still, yeah. all the people got hurt. What I mean by sacrifice is that they could have spoken up. You mean, you know the police are dynamiting people? They blew up Fred Shuttlesworth's house. Mm. That's the guy you work with. Who was doing all this bombing? They could have found it then. And they didn't, they didn't do that. These are the kinds of things that black folk in leadership do where they make a decision against all of us for themselves. And, and and you can critique it. And I could say Dr. King was a piece of crap on that, and so was A.D. King. And I say his family's crap, but they don't agree. And by the way, nobody's feeling them these days, so, you know. Well, the, the King people. family, I always say about them is that, you know, it's been proven that their family was on the government surveillance started with the maternal grandfather for three generations. And you look at the aftermath of Dr. King, his brother died the next year under questionable circumstances. 
The bomb get killed at the church, Albanese at the organ by a Hebrew Israelite, June 30th, 1974, Marcus Wayne Chenault from Ohio. So the King family has paid a price, a dear price, for their we, we, we participation. Not to, but, but hold on. You mentioned A.D. King, who got mm-hmm. killed July 21st, 1969. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm very much aware, and I didn't dismiss the sacrifice of their lives, but you mentioned three people, mm-hmm. and I mentioned six. And I'm not saying that Mrs. King, I remember where I was when she got shot. Mm -hmm. I remember where I was when Dr. King got shot. I remember where I was when I heard A.D. King drown, supposedly. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm very much, I feel nothing but empathy for them and the Shabazzes and for all of the black folks who've lost. But you see, we've got it all wrapped up in two or three people dying. And we're whole people. People die every day. 340-some-odd people have been shot now in Baltimore. One of them mm. is a young, promising black businesswoman who gets murdered for employing people and creating opportunity. Mm. Wow. That comes too. And they've got us fixated on these people. And, in fact, we're so concerned about someone that speaks up getting injured or dying, if we're really in a struggle, until we justify traitors and interlopers and non-foundational black American misleadership like Barack Obama to destroy us. And, oh, well, he can't, he can't include subprime loans and the, and the TARP money because white folks will shoot him. So we'll, let's all lose our trillion dollars worth of wealth and be homeless because we don't want him to get shot. Frankly, if I had to choose between us losing a trillion dollars worth of wealth and black folks being homeless and so forth, and someone taking a, a shot at Obama, which they weren't going to do, I take the shot. You know, Dr. Short, when you're saying that, I think about the fact that people can access all the debt magazine uh, <laughs> issues online. It's archived online. And I remember reading the Jet magazine that came out after JFK was killed, and they actually seriously considered about, they, they actually talked about suspending the civil rights movement because President Kennedy got killed. I'm telling these so-called leaders of the civil rights movement was talking about we should suspend our movement for equality because the president was assassinated. You can look this up online. And it was mm-hmm. surreal to, to read that, the Negro type of thinking. Well, but that's not surreal for me. Uh, there's a letter that Dorothy Height and all these other people signed saying that they were against Dr. King for speaking about out against the war in Vietnam and that these people basically gave the government uh, permission to kill Dr. King. Black people did this. Dr. Dorothy Height, who made Dr. King at the boathouse when he was a teenager? Dr. Dorothy Height? Dr. Dorothy Height? I, I didn't hear you because your phone got fuzzy. Can you hear me Can you hear me now, Dr. Short? Yeah, whatever you did, yeah. The, the, the Dr. Dorothy Height, who actually met a teenage Dr. King at Morehouse, basically helped him to get killed. What you say? I'm not saying that she helped him to get killed. I'm letting you know that the black leadership in the country let the white leadership in the country know that Dr. King wasn't with them. Okay, kind of like though, Marcus Garvey was sold out by the black leadership. Well, he was one well, saying that they sold out, yes. Dorsey mm-hmm. did sell Dr. King out, yes, they mm-hmm. did. And and the same people sold out uh, Adam Clayton Powell. They yeah. yeah. I agree um, with you with Adam Clayton Powell being a great man. Mm-hmm. I, I, Judge Joe Brown, I don't agree with him on that one. I let Joe Brown say that this is his show. I, You're right, right. My thing about Adam Clayton Powell. I'm a fan I, of his. I, I, I love my mulatto. That's one of my mm-hmm. favorite brothers. <laughs> and I don't care how dirty he is. He helps other people being dirty. That seems to be difficult for black politicians now. They can only be dirty for themselves. Okay. But, he was, but, but Dr. Shaw, I would say that Adam Clayton Powell Jr. was not necessarily corrupt. He was honest about his, you know, about his shortcomings. He, he was honest I, about his flaws. I love, I love Adam Clayton Powell. I love Adam Clayton Powell. Okay, so yeah. You don't have to say, look, I'm, being, <laughs> I'm trying to say uh-huh. be, be a dirt ball for all of us. Right. Okay? I remember I was in charge of the Upper Bound program, and there was some ice cream. And I know my, my bad ghetto kids and told them, y'all steal, but steal carefully. <laughs> and I open the thing up, and I get five or six in a day. That's right. Just 
don't carry it in front of the cashier. <laughs> Put it down in your pocket. I can see, we can all we can do the stealing together. Steal together, children. Don't you get worried. But don't put it out there. Don't eat the ice cream in front of the guard. Are you mm. understanding? Me? Everybody hustles. Right. My thing is, but hustle together. Don't just hustle for you. Mm. If you can make millions, mm-hmm. you're not a restart of business. Do you realize, brother? I'm going to just say this to you. Hurt. I mean it. If I can get my LLC, because I'm going to start doing stuff on human trafficking, and I can get something fired up, and I can get resources, I would call you, I share with other people and say, hey, look, I got funding for a project. Y'all want to do a part of it? This is what every other people do. Let me share something with you. Black folks are too goddamn stingy. We're more white than white people are. Hmm. White folk will share with at least a certain set of white folks. A black person will try to hoard it all for themselves. Not even both family members can have anything. <laughs> and, and that's right. Like, uh, I'll give you an example. I was in Brazil. I was in Recife or Recife. If you know, it's like way, it's, it's a little tip of the Brazil that sticks out that you see in the Atlantic. So it looks like the top of a pyramid. The seat is up there. And I had a whole bunch of Chippehoy cookies. And I saw some homeless black kids. And, you know, I can't do much for them, but I didn't eat all these cookies. I don't want to be overweight self. So I said, hey, get the cookies to them. I ran to one of the kids. I gave my full box of cookies. Do you think he would think to give one box and keep three for himself? No. He ran and hid and ate all the cookies without having to share with his crew. And I thought about it. It reminded me, I grew up with white kids. I'm glad I did. I thank God I didn't grow up in a predominantly black environment the way we are, a lot of us, should I say. Mm -hmm. Because I noticed when I lived out with white folks, if they were cool with you, if their mom baked a cake, they'd bring you a piece whether you asked them or not. Uh, all kinds of stuff. They got new toys, they'd give you their old toys. They just do it. They do it for one another. Share. Mm-hmm. When I got to the city, I noticed if my friends had something really good at their house to eat, you would not see them until it was all gone. They'd tell you about it. Even if they ate at your house all the time. You understand me? There's this sense that I've had it so bad until I don't have to share or think about anybody but myself. And we make an excuse when you go versus it, right? I thought the roach was getting on top of a black woman. I'm like, it's versus it. So if I'm, I'm like ripping it vagina. You have some kind of America. There's always an excuse for why we don't treat each other the way we should do. And I'm not talking about big things. Like I said, food. If they're going to go somewhere, you wouldn't see these people until they'd already done it. They'd say, oh, man, we got so much fun. We had so and they deliberately, it was about not sharing. We have this whole thing about flaunting, mocking you for what you don't have instead of saying, let's all have, let's all get together. Let's do this. Let's share. It's possible. Other people come to this country and succeed because they're willing to share a little bit to get a little bit. We fail because we try to have it all. You know, an Asian person will have a chicken shack next to a black person's chicken shack. The Asian people may have grease older than Methuselah. However, their price of chicken for their box will be about $5. You know how much black folks are going to ask for the same box of chicken and they don't change their oil either? 12 mm. Now, we already know that black folks are biased to go to the other people to spend their money, right? Mm-hmm. So you've got that disadvantage. And you're going to have a price that's much higher than the other person. Whose store is going to go out of business? The black person's store who thinks black people should come and spend two or three times what something's worth because I'm a black person doing something. We don't pay black hoes more. We don't pay, pay black pimps more. We don't pay, pay more black pushers more. And we don't give more to black preachers. So why is you know, if all, it's as if we're completely dishonest with ourselves about what is. Mm-hmm. And, and sit, get my frigging business and then keep my business versus 
trying to get a hundred dollars for a box of chicken the first time I show up. This mm. is why I like this. This is fail. There's contempt and hatred for anyone that would buy from them, right? Mm. And yet you want to come and buy from because other people hate them. Other people hate our debts, and we buy from them instead of having a service that is superior to the next person, that's competitive in price, that provides for that community. I, I, I often see black people have a problem about putting a sparkle on what they do for one another. We tend to treat each other exactly as the folks who hate us do and expect a different outcome. And so... <laughs> And it's the same thing for black leadership. Yes, I expect you to be willing to take a bullet for me. You're my leader. Yes, I expect you to at least not have a Rolls or a Bentley if I'm taking the bus. Uh, these are basic things that a leader or leadership or people that are, are, are going to help us get somewhere would have something that we share versus being up in the air like the boule whoever these coons are, who make decisions for you and I against our better betterment without our consent. And yet the minute one of them is being taken off to jail for stealing, this is racism. In other words, all you niggas that I think that are not rejected, come and save me. <laughs> no. I, I would just pick all of those folks up. Mm -hmm. It should be save us. Okay, so... Whenever I talk to you about a project or something I'm involved in, even if I can only play a small part, it is usually for a larger game, not just what I'm going to get out of it. Do you feel me? Yes, sir. I, I'm not ex I wouldn't be happy, and I'm just telling you how I am. If I'm riding down the street in a half-million-dollar car and the other people eating dog food off the sidewalk, that would make me sick. And living behind the wall with security cameras and all would not take that thought out of my mind that someone has to eat out of a garbage can and I've got more food than I can throw away. Mm -hmm. And we can no longer say the whitey man, the whitey man. Whenever I hit when they talk, tell me about how much they hate whitey. They're usually trying to kill blackie. Mm. So, anyway, that that's... So, as for the kings, uh, yes, people died in their family. Yes, I feel for them as I do for a lot of other people. Um, I met a lady, her name is, uh, I think her name is Miss Hawkins. Okay. And she's had three of her sons murdered in the last four years. Mm. Okay, that's as many people died in the King family. Oh, then they bumped off Mrs. Coretta Scott King. They messed her up in Mexico, that's four. Okay, let me prove the numbers. I don't know what happened with Yolanda. So four. Four. And by the way, the King family's been silent about uh, Coretta Scott King being messed up in Mexico and how that went down. Mm. So you, you won't even fight when your mama's killed. With the Malcolm X grandson, you get killed in Mexico, Mexico too, right? Yeah. You still don't really know what happened down there with that. Well, yeah, they have some idea. But if the mother got money from folk that helped send them down there, yeah, I said it. Then mm. um, it's all weird. So I'm being just. Well, 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 Dr. Show, what do you think about how they're trying to reinvent Malcolm's legacy now with these uh, TV shows and documentaries like The Godfather of Harlem and the Netflix documentary coming out early next year and some other things? Well, you know, for me, um, I don't. I mean, they have so many biopics because they're trying to figure out how to get money because Hollywood is dying. Mm -hmm. And um, there's been so much porn and so many buttholes, nut sacks, vaginas, and so forth, the boobs that you can watch before you need another one. So the thing that's making money is porn. You know, the porn industry makes for every dollar that regular people make, the porn folks make three or four. Yeah, they make four. So... um those folks are not trying to make porn. They've got to figure out a way to get people to buy their product. And they know black people will buy, although, um, and they've known this all along, but they'd rather us go and see boring, nasty, stupid movies about people that don't look like us. And I guess they're beginning to, I guess, with a lot of gay themes and directors and so forth, let um, um, black folks in Hollywood make stuff 
get black people's money because this country's demographics are shifting. Um, proof of that is they're moving 300,000 people off the voter rolls in Georgia. Hmm. Why they keep trying to do that? They keep telling you black people only 30% of the population in Georgia and it's not going to increase in the next 30 years. So it's going to be 30%. Then why are you only taking blacks off the rolls? And where, where's the old, old girl that ran for governor? Is she advocating bringing awareness to that? Well, we have to deal with her first and foremost. Okay, Stacey Abrams. Mm-hmm. There are people who love Stacey and there are people that don't. And there are people that know that Stacey is like a lot of these strong black women. They're not really that strong when they're dealing with white folks. They're usually strong when they're jumping on a black man. <laughs> yes, I said that. Black women are really great at beefing and complaining about black men and jumping on them. But you want to see a, a black woman be a punk put up against white women and white men. Most mm. black women are not fighters. It's a lie. It's all a myth. Yeah, I hope I'm angering some people in your audience. Because I've seen, now there's some black women that are fighters. There's some Harriet Tubman's. But Harriet Tubman is not a dime a dozen. She's a rare gem. She's a rare diamond. Okay, Fanny Lou Hamer is a rare diamond. Mm. Uh, a lot of these sisters that get elevated in these positions, um, they're either uh, got a white lover, male or female, and typically don't like black men. That's a trend all over the country. You look up like the one that's up in Illinois' 14th Congressional District, Underwood, and she should be called no good. <laughs> They're going to mm-hmm. get rid of her. She's going to be a one-termer because she um supporting this anti-Trump stuff in a red district that she won pandering to LGBT. And, by the way, she looks like... um. <laughs> She looks like uh, Wesley Snipes addicted to carbohydrates. And uh, <laughs> she's, 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 she's out. These, I mean, I'm sick of that. I, I, I just enjoy fighting um, and, and denigrating uh, ignorant, uh, sellout black feminists. They're enemies to the community in every way. And Stacey uh, is a feminist. And therefore, that nullifies anything good she can do for black people. Stacey Abrams wants to climb up the Democratic Party. I'm not knocking it. And at the same time, I'm not praising it. Okay, let's talk about something. Stacey Abrams is one of the best-known black women in the country. Why aren't they talking about this girl? Um, what's her name? Uh, uh, Corinne's or something. It'll come to me. She's up in, in, in Wisconsin, the girl who killed her temp and set his house on fire. Mm-hmm. Says, I don't hear all these uh, jive-ass black women out here, when a black woman has been dishonored like this since black men ain't shit and no black man has never done I get it. He ain't paid child support. He hit me. He's like, Mr. Okay. okay. Let's say black men are negative zero. Then where are the superhero black women? Like for this girl, Santoya Brown, down in your Tennessee. Mm-hmm. I mean, Oprah and all of these big blabby face uh, LGBTQ black women should be fighting for these folks. They usually don't. It's interesting. Start thinking about this. Where the hell are these loudmouth black women when black women need them? It's $15 mm-hmm. an hour. Um, it should be $20 an hour. Black women that clean hotel rooms and stuff, the worst paid people in the country. Where Where is um, frog-looking amphibian-looking Maxine Waters for black women. Oh, God. All of these folks. Oh, oh, and damn it, show me some power. I'm not talking about for black men since we all know good and we all want to be the white women, right? And we, we all need black women at least to be under 200 pounds to go out with them. So let's just put us off and say that what they're saying about us is true. Then where are these wonderful superheroes? Yeah. yeah. They're on a Watchmen on that HBO show. I, I King. Thought, yeah, I'm familiar with that guy. All, all I can tell you is that these women with these black human trafficking is at an all-time high. Black women are maybe 200 times more likely to end up being enslaved sexually. By the way, that ugly Uncle Fester looking broad, uh, Karen Bass, she looks like Uncle Fester with an afro. Mm. She's supposed to be leading the charge to fight against the abuse of children and human trafficking. Show me a piece of legislation that these black women are fought for to protect black women. 
There are about 25 of them up in Congress. Don't tell me 25 representatives can't get nothing. Mm. But let, let a little white lesbian feminist put a bill up, and they get all the black women co sponsor I mean, I look at this, and yes, I, you know, I know certain people who don't like me doing this way. Um, I don't see it. I haven't seen it. Show me. And I, what I'm going to say to you is all those broke-back broads up in Congress, a bunch of them are broke-back females. They never do anything for black women. Never. That's you can so have long. a black mayor in Baltimore, and there'll be more black girls disappearing than ever before. They've had three of them. We got a black mayor in D.C. She couldn't even get her attention. The whole people crying out, do something about missing girls. We got a county executive female, first one in Prince George's. Is she doing anything? No. Let's come out here. No. No. They don't do anything. So it's a way to power to simply put black men down, drop kick black men. And I'm not saying don't kick black men behind when they're wrong, but what do they do right that's solutionary and for lifting up our sisters? Not a damn thing. I can assure you, being in the Rebecca Project for Justice, when we went in and asked the women, can we, the black women, the caucus, by the way, can we help fight against breast cancer? and other unfair drugs targeted towards black women, would you please at least let us speak to you? The answer was no. Mm-hmm. Mm. No, uh, uh, black, black girls, you don't have anything. These women get that money, I told you, they get that money from... Um, So give me one second. For em- Emily's list, you talking about? Emily's the, list. They give you Emily's yeah. list money. They also get DNC money, other stuff. And they get money from HRC, the Human Rights Campaign. So okay. basically the gay NAACP. Actually, the white gay NAACP, because we already have the black one. <laughs> <laughs> so they get their money from people who hate our guts. And so as a result, no matter what happens to black women, uh, you don't you don't see these black women that have elected offices take any risks for black women. Now, when black men don't do, rightfully, folks criticize them, as they should. But because women get a vagina pass, I have a vagina, you can't criticize me if you want some. So, and that's how the black men work. And we all want some vaginas, so no one's going to say anything about people in vagina who don't do what they're supposed to do. I don't subscribe to that. I believe mm-hmm. everybody's equal. If you get an office, do the job well. Speaking of that, there's a hero that we need to take off the heroes list. Their name is Shirley Chisler. She should okay. be called Shirley Chisler. You know, Shirley Chisler was the one. And she's a Caribbean, and, and she stabbed all the black men in the back. And then the white lesbian stabbed her in the back. <laughs> then she came back to black people. Oh, they all, my, how they learned. You know that there's a national abortions right something, NARAL, N-A-R-A-L. You know that one of the first people to come in and support all this baby killing was Shirley Chisler. Mm. No, okay, but you remember... uh, mm -hmm. Shirley Chisler, when she thought she had the white feminists and all the people that wanted to kill black babies behind her, that's when she decided to run for president. And those same white women that used her to sign off for killing black babies didn't back her. Uh, have black women figured anything out politically since 1972? Hell no. So that's what I say about Stacey Abrams. I'm not impressed. I refuse to be impressed. If Stacey Abrams was really about doing something about getting the 300,000 people being able to vote, she would do what the little project leaders in Chicago did. They would call for people to divest their money out of the state of Georgia. That same Stacey Abrams, her little, um, what's his name, uh, Walter Payton looking self with no helmet on. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Stacey Abrams and all those other people fought to make certain that men could be in the women's restaurants. They, they, I mean, in North Carolina, all over, they fought so you could be in the women's restroom if you were a man, if you said you were a woman. If you can get an absurdity like that, but you can't make certain that voters who will pay taxes get on the voter rolls, you're sorry. Where are her gay allies? Where are all the gay allies? Where is John Lewis's bald-headed, pancreatic cancer having behind when this is going on? 
He's up talking about gerrymandering everywhere else, and he's silent about his own state. Why? Where's Sanford Bishop? Where's that little sorry uh, Hank Johnson? Uh, they said he used to have hepatitis C. It looks like he's coming back. Okay, I'm just tired of these people. They can't say they can't take these people on. They can't go to the UN. They can't have a divestment and say, "Hey, Jack Kemp, uh, whatever his name, Kemp, we're going to tank the bonds for the state of Georgia if y'all do this." The one thing white folks care about is money, right? All they do is care about is money. Then go to money. Why are you sitting up talking about morality? How many people talk to hoes about morality or pimp or pusher or landlord? If you're not talking about cash, they don't care. So why are people talking about, um, you know, what's right? When have white folks ever done what's right in relationship to black people? And why have they had to? Why would they have to? They're not going to get our help, right? Well, I want to go back to the Shirley Chisholm thing. I think it's an interesting thing because I know I talk to people about this all the time. But you had like a person like uh, Margaret Sanger. A singer with the Clans woman and the, and the founder of Planned Parenthood, she had the support of people like Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois and Dr. King, and even Planned Parenthood sought the advice of Malcolm X on how to market or target black people as it relates to their their agenda. And this has been well documented. So it's a comp- complex thing when we kind of cherry pick people's like you know choices or decisions. It's complex. Here's the thing I'd say to you that's interesting. Mm-hmm. If I ever tell you something that's factually incorrect in your show and I find out it is, I'll call you back and I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I made an error because I don't want to give out bad information. Mm-hmm. Once Shirley Chisholm found out how she got used by the white lesbians, in particular, ugly, um, she looks like the Frito Bandito <laughs> with the facial, uh, Bella Upzug. Oh, Once yeah. they had Shirley Chisholm in the back, little ugly, greasy, um, the self sufficient spelling of a lesbian. Um, <laughs> when she came back, she never ever acknowledged, I stabbed the black men in the Democratic Party in the back, thinking that I didn't need them to run for president. And these folks turned out that they were white first, and they weren't women first, the same way most white women voted for Trump. Mm-hmm. She never did it. She went to her grave not talking about it. Well, you know, one person I respect that was a black woman that did not trust the white feminists. She knew what they were about from day one was Fannie Lou Hamer. Like, she was off the plantation and knew that you can't trust them people. Yeah, well, Fannie Lou <laughs> Hamer was off with no education and she could tell. Right. By yeah. the way, what I'm going to say to you, but hold on. When Fannie Lou Hamer went to fight against eugenics in 1972, mm-hmm. Fannie Lou Hamer was fighting against Shirley Chisler. <laughs> wow. Interesting. So, yeah. And she was sterilized by the state, too, against her will, right? The state of Mississippi sterilized. Yeah. Without her knowledge. She yeah. was sterilized, as were hundreds of thousands of other people. Mm-hmm. And by the way, the Greek letter organizations and all supported this thing done to black women. Yes, they did. The that was about Dr. King. You know, he boule, right? Alpha man. All, all of the black <laughs> folks that are successful hate the ones who are unsuccessful and don't want you to be successful either. Go figure. Hate this one. Yeah. We all messed up. Now, oh, and you heard about, I was talking to a sheriff about Dame Dash. Now, tell me about it. Inform us, like, what's your take on that? Dame Dash, I don't even follow him that much. My thing is to just say to you, um, the thing that's more interesting to me was uh, Bill Cosby's publicist attacking Eddie Murphy. No, Andrew White, yeah. He attacked attacked Eddie Murphy harder than the white woman that lied on, on, on Bill Cosby. (laughs) <laughs> and so, um, yes, I said it. And just look the brother up. How come you can't find his 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 public relations firm online? It's hard to find. You're representing a person worth a half billion dollars, and you don't have a website that people can find. That's why he's in jail now. I mean, because he had the, the bad well, people around him. He had bad choice of people around him. Yeah, yeah, but there's a key mm-hmm. person, the same person that attacked Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. Um, if he knows what he's doing, Bill Cosby should at least be on on, on release or appeal. There's something wrong with that whole thing. Something wrong, exactly. I'm sorry, Eddie Murphy was funny. It was good to me. I enjoyed it, Um, especially the Mr. Rogers thing. About justification, yeah, Mr. Robinson, yeah. It was boss, and I don't really care. And, and, you know, Eddie Murphy seems to be mellowing out now that he's with the white woman. (laughs) 
But Dr. Short, I don't think people understand Eddie Murphy did show Cosmic respect. He had to address that issue because of their history. But he didn't do no full blown skit on Cosby. He just made a little riff. Like yeah, like he did a whole skit where he just really down Cosby. But you yeah, see, you know, when I first started mm-hmm. hearing about it, I was like, okay, so what did he say? Right. And, I mean, it really wasn't as bad as people were mm-hmm. um, making it out to be. Bill Cosby's publicist who's trying to get some attention for himself. Now, you're a publicist. You're supposed to know how to get attention. You got mm-hmm. Bill Cosby behind in jail as a client, and you're trying to get attention. You're well, it's, like, it's like a bodyguard. It's like two bodyguards. They're looking for the camera when they should be looking out for him. They all looking at the camera and crap, and they ain't well, keeping their eyes on him. Bill Cosby is being betrayed, I assure you. Mm-hmm. Bill Cosby is being betrayed, mm-hmm. and he's being betrayed by the boule and everybody else. So just say this to you. If not even someone like a Betty Boop, a.k.a. Roland Martin, he does look like Betty mm-hmm. Boop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, why do you call him Betty Boop, short? <laughs> yeah, why? <laughs> why? Why are we calling him Betty Boop? <laughs> yeah, we get a roll over Martin a Betty Boop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it his curls? I mean, he got but an I, interesting shaped head. I'll tell you that. I'll give you he that. He does just like Betty Boop, and Betty mm. Boop and I was the black oh. Boop 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 was a black woman they stole. <laughs> uh-huh. so Betty, yeah, so Betty, Boop, Betty Boop. Not one <laughs> black journalist in all this time has sat down. To talk to Bill Cosby, just to, to talk to his wife, anything, his kids, somebody, or write up or do an investigative piece. The entire so-called black media has been silent. Why? Hmm. And are they afraid that if if Bill Cosby can be railroaded and no one can say anything, then all the rest of us can be killed? This is why I don't. Ha- we have to disrespect all these people, even little phony um, foreigners like uh, Fraud Reed. <laughs> Remember, I don't know, she's been hearing your jokes on your channel, man. Remember I used to ride her hair? It looked like she had a bead on her head, but it's a roadkill. She was looking sexy. Joy Reed looked like she wasn't even from Africa when I saw her the other day. She said, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she, looked, she actually looked like she went to a real black beauty salon. The first time, is, you, know, you know, I felt like singing Shalmar, second time around, right? <laughs> <laughs> or things the best for last year. I'm just she she had a little ignorant feminist out there with all the lies about black folks being Russian but mm-hmm. I I read mm-hmm. that's the first time she hasn't looked home to me. Because, you know, come on, you live in Tennessee, you you know you see road kill on the side of the road. What is that? The highway uh one twenty? Mm. The one twenty what's the highway that goes from uh Nashville through Jackson down to uh Memphis. What's the name of that? Eighty eight? Eighty six, what is it? It's like uh, I want to say the right name. Uh, go ahead. We got. We know what you're talking about. It's not. It's not called Highway 55. It is 60. Okay, not, Highway 50, no, it's not 55. Not nah, 55 goes to the St. Louis way. It goes that way. No. It's like 385, but it turns to something else. But go. We know what you're talking about. We'll, we'll put it in later. From County all the way down to West Tennessee and mm-hmm. into uh, into Mississippi. Anyway. All I'm going to say to you, 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 you've seen lots of roadkill living in Tennessee. You've yeah. Both of you. mm-hmm. And that's how Joy Reed's hair used to look. I used to talk about Joy Reed's hair. I was right. This stuff mm-hmm. like burnt out this sugar. Mm-hmm. And when I saw her hair, I think our jokes had finally reached them. If nothing else, we got people spoofing up their uh, television on air appearance. We should give ourselves a big pat on the scroll. <laughs> well, not pat who hard. But... Mm-hmm. We should be very happy. I saw Joy Reed. Oh my God! She even someone even did her makeup. I was like, Wow! <laughs> now I see why she's married. Because before I was like, sticking. She looked like one of them angry girls at the bar that can't get a dance. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I'm serious. I don't know if that was her hair or new wig or her and Maxine are competing or something. But even. <laughs> In fact, I was, Maxine Waters had a new wig at Elijah Cummings' funeral. I was really impressed. I'm, still, I'm telling you, that thing was so bright, it could have generated solar power. It could have taken care of all of Mexico. Mm. Yeah, and, and and John Lewis was walking around like Mr. Tudball off the Carol Burnett show. Remember him? Mm. Conway, Tim Conway just died, by the way. Mm-hmm. 
John Lewis was walking around like Mr. Turbo. <laughs> and uh, Elijah Cummings funeral, like he was confused. He didn't know where he was going. Or like he wanted to climb up in the casket and get with Elijah. I didn't know. Um, anyway, uh, I won't miss some of these boomers that didn't do right by us. And let me see. Talk to me. What's some other questions? Oh, by the way, notice how the team, the only thing working in Baltimore is the football team. Yeah. Anything else? Just up. Yeah. And um, there's a thing about Baltimore. Let me tell you my joke. And people from Baltimore are very proud. And there's like this Hutu Tutsi thing between Baltimore and D.C. I didn't know it was that bad. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't, I, I never heard anything really. I have cousins and family and roots in Baltimore. I'm sort of thinking badly about Baltimore. And I just learned this lately. And so my joke here is um, there are people. And a three-story building that's on fire, four-story building, whatever, a tall building. And there's a guy from Philly, a guy from Washington, a guy from Baltimore. Mm-hmm. The fire department comes up, sends up a long ladder to bring the people down, or at least to drop them into the, uh, the, the, the blanket thing that they're holding to catch them. Um, and uh, so the first guy that the uh, fireman gets, this guy from Philly and the guy from Philly, you know, they're so cool. He says, man, you promise me you're not going to drop? And the guy says, yes. Okay, you sure? He says, I'm sure you won't drop. Okay, so he gets him down. Then he comes in, the next person's from D.C. And D.C. person says, you think they'll be able to save some of us stuff in this place? He says, sir, it's a four-alarm fire. We don't know about that, but we know we can get you out of here safely. So he takes him down. He comes up the third time, this guy from Baltimore. And the guy says, are you from D.C.? So these people rather be burnt up than someone from D.C. do something, anything, even if their life count them. It's like, wow. Mm. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it almost reminds me of being down in Tennessee I, when I learned I was a northerner. That mm. really blew my mind. I still can't get, having been called a collard green and biscuit eating uh, nigger, in Boston for being a southerner there to learn in Tennessee that I was a northerner was like shocking. Mm, interesting. <laughs> um, but can y'all explain that to me? What makes somebody from Virginia a northerner to a person from Tennessee? I, I don't know because we both, you know, Tennessee touches Virginia. So I don't, Virginia to me is the South. Well, see, when you're enlightened, so what are the dumb people down there thinking? I don't know. That's kind of strange. We got Bristol, Tennessee, and Bristol, Virginia, so we touching each other. I know. And, you know. I'm doing a, doing a genealogical project on the person who has family in both cities. Uh huh. In fact, I need to go back in the library and do some work for dude. So, anyway, keep keep it moving. Um, we want to talk about Oprah Winfrey and this new two thing. We should talk about Dave Dash. And I was saying, no, Dr. Uh, Show, you come in. Uh, I speak I out. We can't hear you, Harlan. Can you speak up a little bit? Kind of hard okay. to hear you. I don't really know much about Dame Dash, and mm-hmm. I probably don't care. Okay. <laughs> but I'm just looking at how Oprah Winfrey and that woman that looks like, uh, she looks like a dinosaur version of KRS One. It's like KRS One has stuck with the female Tyrannosaurus. And this one out. She does look like a tar- a female. But yes, she looks like a mulatto Tyrannosaurus, part human, mm-hmm. part dinosaur. Tyrannosaurus. Yeah, the meteorite didn't hit her. She wet. Mm. She does mm-hmm. look like a mm-hmm. meteorite, mm-hmm. but she got big arms. <laughs> it just, I don't know. I mean, to me, she should feel like Powerball if anybody did touch her. She's really not uh, becoming. And so I'm just thinking, and I don't know what it is, you know, her and Oprah. Now, Oprah was a fat girl. And my thing is, is there something, you know, because when you look on TV, and I'm not trying to kick, they don't have fat white women on television. I don't know if black women notice that, that the only people allowed to be on TV that's fat are black women. And I kind of consider that an insult 
because if they have a Hispanic woman, she won't be fat. Asian woman won't be fat. Like, it's a morning show. And the black female host on there is bigger than all of her colleagues. They have mm. to almost give her own table to sit on other things. And I was thinking, that, you know what? I would immediately feel out of place if I was the size of all of my hosts put together. Like, they were trying mm-hmm. to do a group book, and all of the white we had to all get next to each other to touch the black lady. She was too big for them to put their arms around. And I just don't folk notice that. Like, even the black dude, remember Willard, not Willard, but the black dude, Roker. Al Roker, yeah. Even Roker realized, I have to lose weight. Because they were mm-hmm. giving him help by being fat. But they don't do that to black women. And there's a lack of accountability. And it's part of that is fueling a rebellion that you don't have to fit in any norms because you're a black woman. But at the same time, they mock black women for being big. I'm thinking about Lizzo when you say all that. I'm thinking about the Lizzo situation. Lizzo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's talk about Lizzo. Yeah, okay. Now, this Lizzo person, I am not impressed. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not about big girl shaming with her. It's just that she is, she is pushing an image that um, women are sleazy, trashy, calling each other bitch and all that. That's not what we're about. And if you notice how these Nicki Minaj's and um, who is somebody else? With the Rihanna. Even though yeah. Re- Rihanna, she's you know changed somewhat, you know, in her older years. But a lot of these women, they're not American. These are Caribbean women, and mm. then and, and and they're portraying themselves or being portrayed as black women, and that's not what we represent. We don't. Liz, oh no, I hear she's from Houston and Michigan and all of this. Right. But I, I guarantee you, if you tra- check her lineage. That girl comes from somewhere else, her family. I mean, to me, she's just trashy. And, and and what she did at that Lakers game, now, keep in mind, when Janet Jackson performed with, what's his name? The Timberlake, Timberlake boy? Yeah. Right. And, 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 and the, the, everyone was complaining about Janet. Oh, that's horrible. She showed her nipple at the Super Bowl. But then you allow the big girl, Lizzo, to get up here with her ass out, shake it around, and that was at a game. But no and one she's saying anything of the year, about her. Right. What performer of the year? Why? Mm-hmm. Because she supports LGBTQ LMNOP. So she's mm-hmm. allowed to go on stage, shake her ass, and be vulgar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I have a problem with that. Now, what do you guys think? I want to hear from some men. All right, I'm glad to hear your perspective. I'm passionate to hear your point of view. But go ahead, Doctor Show. You want to? And the thing is, is, it reminds me of the, um, the uh, Where's the Beef commercial. Remember that one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Wendy's. Yeah. And the thing was a big fluffy bun. You don't even have a tight, juicy behind. The thing is flabby. You need to, like, do some some bun crunches, a little. I mean, a sloppy, um, sloppy Joe, poorly composited behind that dad if you're going to put it out there. Mm. And we let the stuff be firm. I, you know, frankly, you know, it's like getting a hamburger and the piece breaks off because they didn't form it right. I mean, if, if I have to see it, I'm going to talk about it. So since you put it out there, and by the way, the black did nothing for her. It it looked like almost like uh, poop was falling out of her behind. So had she worn something yeah. to light the color? At least it would have accentuated. So, one, uh, if I just had to be one of these uh, penis-minded, weak-minded black dudes where, you know, assholes rule the world, I would have to say I would get her behind a C-. She almost has a white girl's ass on top of that. Yes, she has what they call a woody, a fat white girl booty. Not a real black <laughs> booty, which is uh, Michelle Obama booty. You know, the kind of... Well, you know, she, the so thing she about it is... Booty. She, her booty, I'm just being carnal. She has an unimpressive booty. I won't even get into her music. 
Well, and, I'm not even um, looking at her booty. She's just disgusting and vulgar. No, no, but we're going to get to disgusting. I just want to trash poor presentation of the behind. If you go hanging out there, at least have it in shape for it to be breaking up like old oatmeal cookies from the dollar store that the Asians run. That's fair. <laughs> You need to cover mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. It wasn't good to look at. In fact, it's probably oh, yeah. and, it was probably and that Cardi B. Like, that's who I was trying to think of. Yeah, I was Cardi trying to B. think of all yeah. of these well, off-brand people. These Nicki Minaj's and Cardi B's and all you know these Nicki are not, Minaj's, you know, is, we, these are holes. We can't even get a Lauren Hill anymore. I mean, can, can you mm. just give us a Jersey girl? Uh, someone who's you know, dropping some yeah. knowledge in them. Yeah. yeah. But, but I just want to say that Lizzo was trifling. Lizzo, um, but again, I have to finish. When you have a sloppy Joe ass, please cover it up, lady. If it's uh, not one we're going to call her Liz Ho. That's her new name. She probably Liz likes Ho. that, though, actually. You know, she, probably she, she probably <laughs> would like that. We call her she Jim probably Ho. would. She's awful. So uh, the hair, at least it's natural, I think. But who does she look like? She actually looks like, um, I'm trying to think. Do you know who she reminds me of? Rerun mm-hmm. from What's Happening. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> she, and he probably has been Rerun from What's Happening. That's really awful, and that's the man. Just so Lizzo needs to go to the gym. You can be fat, but you can be <laughs> fat behind. You don't want those little hip things and develop that behind. Uh, and, or do like the white women do. Get, wear the underwear that gives shape to your behind since you don't really have it. So, I mean, just don't have your ass out. We don't yeah, want to no, see that. Saying, well, no, that's why she'd have to cover it up to wear the stuff that we give her behind. So, uh, Lizzo, Lizzo, shithole, whatever you call yourself, you're, you're <laughs> you know, I, I've seen, I've worked in old folks' home. I've seen old folks, I mean, who are all bombed out on the drugs that keep men, so they'll just stay in their room. They had better butt than you do. So cover it up. <laughs> I, I don't, maybe you can sing, but a lot of people can sing, and I don't know how much carpet you had to eat or whatever body foods you had to swallow for you to get to where you are. But you know what? It ends faster than it starts. So she has to think about how I, long. I hear she's pretty play. talented. She can play the flute and all of that. I mean, so she could have just got on stage and played the flute. Like she India would, Ari. She would have oh, a yeah. flute. She could probably use it as a sex toy. I mean, mm. something would be something more. I mean, just <laughs> she, she needs to go away. I'm sick of that. I, in fact, oh, you know who I want to talk about? I'm a girl. Uh, translation Pharrell. And it, they, it works. Oh, I'm a girl for real, right? Did you see him where he, he, he looked like a, um, a broom or something. His hair's that. I mean, you know, and <laughs> and now I know when he's saying I'm happy, it could be I'm sissy da 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 da, getting hit in my boots. I'm a sissy da 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 da. da. <laughs> I don't like one Damon Dash people. accused of sexual battery in fifty billion dollar lawsuit. Mm. <laughs> fifty billion. Wow. We don't 50, care. About fifty million. Fifty, 50 million. million. Okay. Okay. Well, he's not gonna get mm-hmm. that. Uh, look, let me tell you. You know, he's running around here claiming broke now, anyway. Mm. Well, he probably is broke. I mean, if he had to go in and fight Tyler Perry for a little bit of money, he can't. Tony him. Daniels, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, or Lee Daniels. Oh, that's someone else. Lee I'm Daniels. Like, oh, how come there's no Me Too for, for gay folk? How could I know they demand, <laughs> you know, you're going to give me that. This guy. <laughs> well, well, it was a I Me Too, but Kevin Spacey killed it, though. Kevin Spacey killed it. That's one, that's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> yeah. okay. We're talking about at least there should be one black person like Tony Medina, somebody get in trouble. Tony Medina. I'm well, you know, you, you okay, you had uh, African Bambada that was accused by people okay, of raping or molesting or whatever he was doing. He, dude always looked like Aretha Franklin with them hats on. I mean, really. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Yes, no. Oh, no. I never liked him. I never bought anything he had. I never paid attention to him. He did that song called Unity with James Brown and I remember seeing a video of that, and that was the first and last time I saw anything that Africa mm. Mombasa did. Um, and they act like, if people are Muslim, that everybody's on the up and up. 
I don't believe that. Also, Michael Jackson. So you ever meet too? But it's always black men as the boogeyman with Michael Jackson or you know well, African man or something like that. They always accusing these people. Let's see. African man did something. Uh, Michael Jackson um, tried, didn't know what to do with that, and that's a mistake. Um, he should have fought. That was really foolish. Let me pull this thing up. I want to go back to talking about Shirley just for a moment. I know that's what's getting me in trouble, Shirley. <laughs> yeah, she, she's an uh, iconic, strong black woman. But she did have respect for yeah, God. She's a power. foreign black woman. She's a foreign mm-hmm. black woman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, no, I got a mess with her. Mm-hmm. Okay, this you didn't touch Barbara Jordan. Though. What about Barbara Jordan? What's he talking about her? What's he talking about Barbara Who? Jordan? Who? Sister Barbara Jordan out of Texas, out of Houston. Well, Barbara Jordan, she's a lesbian. She died with a white woman. But did she make that a part of her agenda? Do you really think she was pushing that as a public figure? No. You know what? I have to. The thing I like about Barbara Jordan or uh, Robert Jordan, whatever you want to call it, is that she, um, that immigration thing she put down was was, was awesome. Okay. I mean, that's just, she was on top and point with immigration. Um. But then you know who succeeded her, though, in her seat, right, in her congressional seat, who succeeded Barbara Jordan? Oh, God. Uh, Mickey yeah. Leland. We don't talk about him Mickey no more, Leland. man. And they, well, they bumped him off, and then... Oh, of course they did. Mm-hmm. And then they put in... Um, oh, the Al Green. I mean, uh, Sheila Jackson Lee. Yeah, yeah, they, they, like, they replaced Henry Adam Clayton Hippo. Powell Jr. with who? Who they replaced Adam Clayton Powell Jr. with? Henry had a hippo. <laughs> I'll, call, I'll call him Mr. Pringles. Okay, Charlie Rangel, yes. yes. Who? They traced uh, Clayton Powell with uh, Charlie Rangel. Remember when they got him out his seat? Yeah, yeah, Charles Rangel. See how they do our leadership? They got rid of yeah. Frank Hampton and they elevated Jesse Jackson. I know. Oh, well, you mean Bobby Rush, who looks like a baffle neck goat. He looks like a baffle neck goat. Why you going to say that? He definitely has a baffle neck goat. Yes, he does. Yes, he I, didn't, does. I don't come in. <laughs> yes, you know, you know it's the truth. Yes, you know, a baffle neck goat. You know what? He, he said, you know, he, he claimed now, oh, I just, he, he claimed that they were coming for him the next morning. How did he you know him? that? Yeah. Told him. It's not true. Uh, he's, he's, he's in military intelligence. And yeah, he did have an army background, or a military he, he background. Come out, they, they know all about it, and that's why they keep him there. That's why he can't get in trouble. But you know, he went to time. Jesse Jackson, I believe, to turn himself in to the authorities, which is interesting. Say that again? He went to Jesse Jackson and helped him turn himself in. Like, you know, he turned Jesse himself Jackson, in to help. Well, he went to the agent to mm. handle him. And Jesse Jackson said, I might be a snitch, but I am somebody. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> When, I, when, when he died, when Jesse died, he would get a safe funeral. I would wear my wire. I was not trying to record him. I was trying to get the essence of Dr. King's message for this country. <laughs> he is too good, man. I, I was not Jesse, a snitch man. because I wanted riches. I was a snitch because I wanted to be great. And to do something for this country, to change the economy, the economics of our community. It was very simple back in the movement, but now we're in the move that we have to pull our synergy to manipulate the clitoris of this society wherein mm-hmm. we <laughs> can move up to take ourselves to the level that we need to be in. Dr. King and others that have died, we have walked over their graves to become rich men. <laughs> Can you imagine good. if you them start yeah. telling the truth? <laughs> you need writing for Dave Chappelle, man. Why he ain't going to hire you, man? He need to hire you. Well, you have to ask him. Mm. You have to ask him. I don't know. But then again, funny isn't, I don't know, people are strange. Then again, uh, I don't like smoke. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't think I can handle lots of smoking. But I do think, oh, I do think we're going to be changed. By the way, what do you think? Tell me what you think about John Woods from Atlanta, George. (laughs) (laughs) 
Should I met John Lewis. I actually gave him an award. I don't know. I, I, don't, mm. I gave him and Andrew Young an award. We all like, you did? Was, yeah. Was, I, 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 uh, did, it, did it look like a petroleum jelly jar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, unless it's interesting, man, because don't care, man, them civil rights legends look like movie stars down there. They like, they're so revered. And they're in the phone book. Like, you could, you know, look up Reverend C.T. Vivian at one point, get him on the phone and visit him. He didn't know who you was. You know, you come to his house and you feel all protected. Don't care. They, they, it's different now. It's a different mindset to me. It's fascinating. Like, John Lewis, he could work with a T.I. or, or uh, we call a guy. Young Jeezy could be at a Joe Biden rally and be respected, and uh, you got Killer Mike and doing what he doing. Unless it's a different type of uh, situation for black folks. Um, this is the consolidation of black leadership within the Democratic Party rubric. It's falling apart. Mm -hmm. I'm doing what little I can as an ordinary person to jack it up, mm -hmm. and then other people. This stay home movement. This uh, Dems dump, we out for Trump. Not that we worship Trump, but something has to shake up the leadership. These people stay sure. to them. Mm -hmm. I'm 54. I'll be 55. I know a lot of people, they never even got a chance because the boomers who are like 30 years older than us, they never, ever, ever, ever made room. They didn't have any, they They expected to live forever. So some of them dying is cool. Like, I'm not upset. Let, let a whole bunch of them go. I mean, let me tell you something. I was up in Congress a couple of days ago, and even when I was at Elijah Cummings' funeral, if you saw how sickly our black elected officials looked in person, how unhealthy many of them are, mm -hmm. how they've been there so long, how weak these people are, you you know, it looks more like an emergency room than a Congress. Mm. This is like a ghetto. I mean, the only difference is somebody hasn't been shot, unfortunately. Just the people, they're old, they're out of touch, they're entrenched. They've got a million medical problems. I mean, if you look at uh, Eleanor uh, Holmes Norton, the congressional delegate from D.C., she's got feet. Um, that they, I'm telling you, they look like... Um, have you ever seen dodo bird feet? You know, they have the long part in the back. and it's, They look like dodo bird feet with shoes on, I'm telling you. Mm. They, just the feet got bunions in it. I mean, they're bigger than the Mount Rushmore. I mean, just mm. go home. You've been out here. You've got retirement. For, you've got multiple streams of retirement. Go out, go out and play Kino. <laughs> go out and gamble your money mm. away, you know, off a of fighter. Hey, let someone else do something. You know, and the woman's head, it looks like, you know, a cotton candy. I mean, they tended to shit so much stuff. It looks bad. But mm. really, I mean, you got moles and stuff that look like raisins and such. I mean, skin look all bad. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> they just, 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 why? I mean, if you sit up and you drink all day and raise money to stay in office and not do anything. And you always talk about the 60s. Most people weren't even living then. And by the way, most people living now don't give a damn about the 60s. And then they're talking about what they did in the 60s, and hell, they didn't do oh, shit. Well, that's yeah, they did tell them, but, but that's actually, it's, they shouldn't say what they really mean, who you did. It's just <laughs> a lot of boning yeah. back in the movement. You know, you know, Dr. Show, you said that I had talked to some uh, veteran from the Freedom Summer Project back in 64. And she'll tell me how they used to have these uh, sex houses where there was all this interracial sex and orgies. Cause we never know when we're going to get killed from moment to moment. We just had to rub on each other and grind for freedom and love. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm not Julian even Bond, funny. Julian Bond and all of them, that's what they're uh -huh. funny. Because, oh, the movement. They don't say movement like you and I. <laughs> movement. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> and Dr. King and the eyes get all big, right? <laughs> and so when you hear them talking about the move, movement, the movement, the movement, the move, and so that was an opportunity for people like John Lewis to get with the white man or a white woman or whatever, and mm -hmm. they really loved that, and the white folk liked it too. 
Yeah. I'm looking uh, at this. This is the. Uh, let me pull this thing up because I'm going to come back to Shirley. Jesus. While you're doing that, <laughs> you do have right. two greats. Yeah. Whose birthdays are coming up? We have Dr. Ben, whose birthday is the 31st, and then Dr. The Honorable Dr. John Henry Clark's birthday is January the 1st. Ooh, I like that with Dr. You know John Ho Franklin is in there too. Like I think he's January 2nd, if not the first. And you know uh, what? All historians. And what's his name? I knew Ho Franklin. The person that that um, what's his name? Uh, Cap Calloway's uh, 112th birthday was Christmas Day. Oh, wow. Okay. So what's going on with that, Dr. Schulte? You can tell us something about what's going on with the you FSA. You over the house thing. There's a, there's a group of people, I'll just tell you, there's some mafia people that want to knock his house down. <laughs> and it, it is. It's a mafia mm-hmm. people, some corrupt stuff. And I, I'm not going to say much about that because I don't want to get into, I don't right. want to hurt the project by saying anything. But um, we're fighting, and when I go back to Baltimore, I'll do what I can do. Uh, and what is this thing called? The National Association for the Repeal of Abortion Laws. Narrow. Here we go. And I'm looking at it. The, okay, and I'm looking at this thing narrow. 350 people in 1969, so 50 years ago. And there'll be... Uh, where is where is that Betty Friedan? Ooh, I can't stand her. Um, by the way, a lot of these people are Jewish, but that's not what I'm going for. Narrow. And when they go, where is this person that they go to? Here it is. The board of directors elected by the membership officially replaced the planning committee for the first board meeting was held September 27, 1967. The board elected the honorary officers and co-presidents, um, co-presidents of Dr. Lester Breslow and Congresswoman Shirley Chisler. <laughs> she was a, a co-president of the Kill the Babies movement. Shirley Chisler. But you know, but Dr. So, Short, I, I go just, ahead, I'm I, sorry. I, I, all I can tell you is when, and, and Shirley Chisholm always did kind of look like a moose cookie. <laughs> I mean, it's just, but anyway. hey, we're going, I already know we're going to get a lot of interest in comments about your thing about Shirley Chisler, as you call her. But I was yes, I'm, I'm going to mess with her. And yeah. she's not me, uh, so I'm just swinging. Oh, no, no. Mm. I, and mm. if anybody's fair game, I, I really know you got a right to express yourself, and, and people got to do their own research. Like I want to encourage people to research. That's what you're telling us, Shirley Chisler. Mm-hmm. You started this kill. The, you they needed a black face to kill these babies. But you and, know, and, and and by the way, from the babies, killing of the babies, you got all this stuff came from this. It's just continued. Okay, and so. We as a people have lost 15 to 20 million people, and if we had reproduced one at a time, we'd be 100 million people right now. We, that's just, you just, you don't forgive things like that. So, you know, I don't give a damn about an ignorant person in your audience. I don't like No, 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 people even say they don't know. uh, No, yeah, but to me, they shut up and listen. Oh, wait, well, I'm 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 not saying that to you. I'm I, saying, I'm saying, some, I had yeah. some Negro call me from England the other day to tell me something erroneous he wanted to debate, and I did a John Henry Clark. I don't debate my inferiors. I lecture them. You don't know what I do. You call me from England, and then you want to go back and forth with me? You, just because you had some of these little stupid cultic religions, you know, worshiping some uh, was a psychedelic coach somewhere, and you think that that's God for you, I should care about you? No, I don't. In fact, I'm going to disrespect you and your religion. Because he said something dumb to me about Christianity. I had someone who said something dumb to me. I had to um, deal with this Muslim person today. Mm-hmm. Or should I say yesterday, the person made a comment to me that the Bible was corrupted and it was written by white people because it was in Greek and all this stuff. And I said to him, well, excuse me, uh, Mr. Muslim, if the Bible's all jacked up, 
doesn't the Quran have some of the Bible in it? Yes, but the good parts. Well, how do I know that the Bible is fucked up? I wouldn't want anything from it at all. I mean, wait a minute. You have the only God, and he's the only one with the revelation, right? Why would the God with the only revelation take a piece of something that was corrupt that existed before? Isn't that kind of mean to say your God is all-knowing, to pick something corrupted from someone else? Mm. But just like you, you, know, you want, this is your argument, not mine. I can't think about the dumb shit you said to me. Then I said something else. Excuse me. And she says, "Will you push us to the trinity?" I like when they talk to me like I made this stuff up. That I would come up with a stupid concept. They come, "Will you push us to the trinity?" We must have don't understand. And so my response was, "Well, I don't understand." Says, "Well, why don't you understand the trinity?" Allah has three daughters. And he got, he went off, right? That's antiquity. I says, wait a minute, how old is Allah? <laughs> if Allah is ageless, then Allah is back in antiquity, right? Mm. <laughs> With the damn three daughters in the air. <laughs> so either there's an Allah that starts when Muhammad decides to pick Allah of all the other gods in the Kaaba, which means to know who was the God that spoke to him when the Quran was revealed. If that's the old Allah, then that's the one with the daughters, unless it's a new one that you got rid of the daughters with. He, he blocked me on Facebook. Well, okay. we'll agree to disagree. But but, yeah. but, 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 but he told me, well, that's antiquities. Of course. He said your God is ageless. That means he's ancient. Antiquities, ancient, exactly. So if he's... And my thing is, is how come that God has a different name from the one in the Bible if we all have the same prophets and everything? You keep telling me what something is, and then you tell me something else. Then you get violent if I ask a question, so I have to believe what you say just on your word. Nah, you can have that. And that's, a, I see a lot of, I, I mean, if, if I think the church people are jacked up, Oh, my God, all these other little religious groups, and then you've got folk out there stabbing Jews and such. You realize I won't be able to get a good corned beef sandwich if I go to Brooklyn behind these people who stab <laughs> 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 What, What's wrong with the people? <laughs> we all got the show. I was going to say, though, if you look at a lot of our heroes, and, you know, heroes and heroes, a lot of them are flawed or still humans. I look at Dr. T.M. Howard, you know, who's from Mount Bayou, who was the what this black man at one point in Mississippi, who was yeah, he did the uh, they did abortion? The, Thank you. They're all gonna get to. But also, he helped mentor Mega Evers, Charles Evers, Fannie Lou Hamer. He helped get the seed money to uh, start Jesse Jackson's organization yeah, in Chicago. He did. He, did, he, he did. raised money for yeah. Malcolm X's family when he got assassinated. He did so many great things for black people. But yeah, he believed yeah. in eugenics and abortion. Yes, and my point is, he's not God. He's a man. Mm -hmm. And all I want is for us to be honest. Okay. Killing black babies is not our solution. You can kill them, but you're a killer. You murdered someone black. There's no way around it. Period. That's where I stand. Okay? And um, and for all this baby killing that we've done, are we black people better off having opened up the Pandora box of the life is in the life? It's interesting. Mm -hmm. It used to be something where black babies were wanted, and now black babies have no value. Well, well did we not have incidents in slavery? And so tell slavery was, you know, the mother would kill the baby to keep them from living a life of slavery. I mean, we have those type of uh, examples, correct? Yeah, but, but obviously our population was growing then rapidly, and now our population is growing very slowly because we're killing so many. So there are a lot of folks that didn't kill their babies. So no disrespect to you. For those that did that, and that was a social minority, but why would we pick a place where now girls take selfies of going in an abortion clinic like it's no serious thing to kill the baby versus a woman that really thought about wanting to give the best life to her children not being able to do it? It's a very different situation, even though the action. But the system but doesn't value see, black life, though. I mean, the system does not well, respect no, no, the value of black value, life. Value, it, yeah, but it's even cheaper now. I think mm -hmm. we have less less value for black life than we've ever had, and a large part of it has to do with the life is in the life. A mm -hmm. baby doesn't deserve anything. It's just something that needs to be scrambled out and killed. 
and there are a whole lot of black women that are sterilized after they get their abortions. These people mess them up or they die later. Uh, and they're killing black women when they have them in the hospital. We need to have our babies at home. Mm -hmm. um, there's just nothing you can say to me. We need every single solitary black child to be born that's possible. And if you don't want them, give them to somebody. There are a lot of people out here that like to adopt children. They can't. And, uh, or they can't have children. There are a whole bunch of these little uh, asshole professionals. They call gay people, women. right? They oh, call oh, gay let, people. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> We have a lot of asshole professional black women that were too busy to even look at a black man until they're about mm -hmm. 50 and decide, oh, my God, I need to get married. As if <laughs> men are going to wait around holding their nuts until you get 50 to decide that you want to be with someone. And they may want a child. Um, there are people who want to have these kids. We should have them. Have the babies. Let's take sex from being swallowing bowel movement and and and. Uh, all this stuff, black people have made uh, sex nasty, dirty, filthy, trashy, commercial. It's, we've become a sewer as a people. Atlanta's a good example, and judgment's going to start the capital of black America when you start seeing black men and women dying and getting sick from all this filth that goes on down there. Whenever what's what's, what's, what's headquartered in Atlanta, though? The Centers for Disease Control, right? Yeah, but that's not the Centers for Disease Control can't make fifteen black men put their mouths on each other's rectums and make a centipede. Jeez. They're not doing that. Yeah. At some point, you can't blame whitey for everything. When these people put up videos of them screwing in the park, men, women, all this stuff, the, the Center for Disease Control didn't do that. That's the foulness and wickedness in the hearts of many of our people. Mm -hmm. uh, we need God. We need a moral revolution in our country. We need to clean up or we're going to screw and disease ourselves out of existence, and it can to happen. If you don't think that you can't whore, orgy, and fag yourself out of existence, you need to do some research on what happened to the Buddhist community in India. They literally whored themselves out of existence. It can, too, happen, and that's why they're pushing it, and we need to push back against it. Am I saying the individual person that just needs to get a, a taser in their booty, that they're the problem? No. We're talking about systemic state-sponsored and other forces colluding to make this stuff happen. So we can't blame Whitey still, that's what you're saying. Oh, well, no, we can blame whitey somewhat, but let's be honest. Um, with all the white supremacy in the world, do you need another brother's bowel movement or nut sack in your mouth to feel like someone cares about you? Mm -hmm. Really? Even though they control all the media and the radio and they've got the coon preachers and everyone else, do you want someone's bowel movement in your mouth? I don't think so. So, and I'm being saturated and bombarded by the same garbage, and I don't want it. So, to me, why do we have to be so damn weak? Uh, when black folks were enslaved, where there were no black colleges or universities or educated people, um, how could some of them want dignity even when it's almost impossible to find? And why do we throw it in the mud, the scum that we've become? We're not even mm -hmm. trying to be upright. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just telling you, I'm talking about being a teacher, and the teachers, you know, talk about blunts and all to the kids, trying to be, trying to be cool instead of be their damn teacher. Or pastors that dumb stuff down, everything screaming and shouting instead of any conversation about anything that's for real. Why can't we be higher? Why does everything have to be base, dirty, and nasty, so-called keeping it real? Says mm -hmm. who? And I'll tell you something. When the people start getting these diseases, which they already have, like little punk that died from ESPN last week, 32 years old, down in Atlanta, on his birthday, yeah, 34. Mm -hmm. way to here, I know somebody wants to jump on that. Okay. And he had a girlfriend bringing them soup in the hospital. I wonder who else was bringing them something. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the wages of sin is death. We want we want to do whatever we want. I got to have sex with everybody. I just have this thing up on my board. They had a party yesterday. Uh, I, I'm going to pull it up. I should send it to you. They had, every now and then when I see something really nasty, I go in and check out people, see what they're doing. And they had a big party, a big party, and they're saying, come and screw all you want. 
Don't be held back. Just all banging it. <laughs> Literally. And they have these little hand bills. Uh, maybe you've seen them, Ashira. Bring your lube. And just, it's a black flesh part. And they're pushing this stuff, right? Let me tell you something. These same white people that don't want to fund, fund Obamacare, if you think that they're going to put their good money on a bunch of black heat Mr. folks that need to screw everyone, y'all got another thing coming. They'll let us die by the millions. In fact, they'll be glad that we killed ourselves off being tramps. Um, the best thing that we, the best defense you have is to be a moral, upright person. Here it is. I took a screenshot of this because nobody, people will think that you don't like folks. Here it is. This is 2019. Uh, make it talk. They're talking about the penis here. Y'all made, made the party, every party, a huge success for the, in, to, for interrogate, and it entertainment. So we want to spend our two-year freak, freak anniversary with you. The only way we know how, with the big dick, ass, big ass dick and fat wet boy pussy fucking balls through the walls. Saturday, December twenty-eighth. Send pictures to make it talk, to for invite for consideration. So if you don't have the right size penis or behind, you can't come. This is what people are doing. I think this is cash app accepted, music, drinks, condoms, lube. This is what's going on in Atlanta and D.C. and L.A. And if y'all think I'm not going to curse this for the filth it is, go to hell. Again, with the big ass dicks, and fat, wet boy pussy fucking balls to the walls. This is what this thing says. I'm not saying people can't do that, but with all this stuff out here, who's pushing this? And these are black people that do this. So when the diseases come, if you think that white folks are going to pay for it, and if you think other people are going to want to pay premiums on other people's hedonism, you're out of your mind. They're not going to do it. They're going to let people die of their diseases. And a lot of black folks don't realize that a lot of folks on the chain gangs that died had sisters from raping each other because they were all chained together. We've been here before, black folks. At some point, we're going to have to decide better for one another. And better means some restraints, some rules, some control. When something's out of control, a good example of something out of control, uncontrolled growth, cellular growth is called a cancer. What's uncontrolled sexual hunger and ravaging on flesh? Mother Nature has a way to check such people. It will come up with things, and as fast as people find the cure, just go and do your research. You'll find the doctors don't even know how to make stuff to keep up with the, the, the diseases mutating and changing. It's almost as if God, every time they come up with a cure, the creator makes something new that they can't control to kill them that way. And they can say sinners for disease control, but I'll tell you something. If we weren't having parties like this one, then the other things that they made out there to kill us wouldn't work. I've lived in a neighborhood full of drugs. I ain't never bought nothing, never going to buy anything. If we weren't using, if we weren't smoking, if we elected to not do some of this, they'd have to find something else. Or actually, it would end up in that community like it is now. And I'm not saying we're the only ones, but I'm primarily concerned about us all the people say white people have diseases too. I can't stand coons that always need to mix white people with the black people stuff. Hmm. You know, if you're getting a hot tub, there needs to be some white people in a hot tub. <laughs> people say, white, white folks use fentanyl. I'm, why is everything compared to everybody else? Do you compare your butthole to the next person? Do you compare your penis to the next person? Maybe they do. But you know, his is smaller, but it's white. <laughs> maybe they do. Maybe, maybe they do. You know how weak 
I, as you know, I just don't respect self-hating black people. They're a drag. And those kind of self-hating Negroes, they hate the black woman. They hate being a black man. Or they hate being a black woman, and they hate the black man, and they hate other black women. We're going to lose a lot of these people. They're going to cancel each other out. Well, Dr. Shaw, sure, I like to go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. The Center for Disease Control if the, and, and the U.S. military uh, uh, medicine, uh, sorry, what's this thing called? It's called the, um, it's some kind of uh, biological weapons thing that they do. United States uh, biological warfare people up in Fort Detrick, Maryland. Mm-hmm. If they need something to kill black folks, in order to make it work, black folks have to be willing to engage in the activity to make the death occur. Now, the vector that they know is the most dangerous is anal sex. They know this. So now, and all they have to do is trust all of our rappers, like the one, the dirty fly red from out of Houston, throw that boy pussy, and he mm-hmm. talks about eating doo-doo and how it tastes like M&M's, and he's uh, produced with a little way. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a real mm. talk. Yeah, yeah. So, you mean if our artists and all these people at Curtis Spoon didn't want me to attack viciously like I did, <laughs> if we're participating in our destruction, we should hate them. And I don't care. If they need to make their money by killing us, it's a reason to despise and to be against them. And it's treason. Other people and other communities, like I just saw the Chinese man who's head of a bank in China and stole some money, is going to be executed. If black people promised black folks who did stuff to bring us down that we were going to get you, you will suffer if you help bring us down. A lot of this stuff would stop. Most people don't think we're serious, and they're right. Black folks are not serious. I don't know anything that we're serious about except seriously letting other people replace us, <laughs> displace us, rip us off, take our kids, steal our organs, steal our music, <laughs> claim credit for our civilizations. We seem to be serious let everybody do this for us. There's nothing else to find us serious about. I wish to God I was wrong. I mean, yeah, I was thinking about all the stuff you said. I was, uh, my mind keep on going back to Oprah Winfrey, and I, I think she's doing a better okay. job. At, she took the place of the Klan in lynching the black man in terms of our image and whatnot, but she sure. wouldn't do all these documentaries on black males. But what about the people she hang around that's non black, like Harvey Weinstein and the, the John of God dude down in Brazil? She well, don't talk about that. Oprah Winfrey is a, a, a lesbian that hates black men. And until black men start treating black women as human beings who happen to have vaginas instead of vaginas that have a body, we're in trouble. And you hold a person equally accountable, male or female. You do the best you can to help your people. Of course, take care of yourself, your family, and what you can do for the collective. And when you fail, I come against you, woman or male, with the same baseball bat in my hand. Mm. And I want to go after the other people doing this to us, but you got to have your house cleaned up first before you go after the next group. Uh, we will have to tell white America to get off of our backs. It mm. has happened. Black folks in 1919, years ago, says we're fighting back. You're not going to die. I'm going to shoot you if you come. We, I won't. I, I will defend myself. And, in fact, if you bother me, I'll go on the offensive on you. Stop bothering me. I have the right to exist. Damn it. Mm-hmm. And the same thing has to be said to Oprah. We have a right to exist as black men. We're going to get you, Oprah, somebody. We're going to find someone. We're going to get a picture of Stedman. We're going to put it out, Stedman, with the man. We're going to show you, Oprah. We're going to punish you. We have to make examples of people. If we did it, what? Wow. In 1972 on Sammy Davis for hugging on Richard Nixon, black folks got Sammy Davis put off TV and everything. Sammy Davis was destroyed for hugging, hugging Richard Nixon. Oprah Winfrey's done a million times worse than Sammy Davis. And I think the other thing, it gets back, and I'm going to tell you what they're doing. They understand that black men are chumps who are beggars, sex beggars instead of men, who feel like they should be in a relationship where they get sexual rewards and family life from their women instead of having to be, please, baby, I didn't love you. No way. 
We're the only men on this earth that I see beg like we're undeserving. God. And so we don't command respect of the women in our community. And they understand that, and they use Elaine Brown, and they're using Oprah Winfrey. They use a lesbian to kill the Panthers. The news using Oprah, another lesbian to kill folks now. And brothers say, well, lesbianism's cool and wonderful because it's two women to give to me. If it's not right for it, to, for it to be two dudes, then it's wrong if it's two women. Period. And black men are sorry. They figure it less than some extra cooch for them to get. There's always something. There's always some extra cooch. Now, <laughs> it's sickening. There's more to you than your penis. Mm. By the way, when you say that, I'll get beat up. Man, there's nothing about me but my penis. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the black man's self-worth is going to have to be that he's a human being. He's an equal creation in the eyes of God, first and foremost. Versus, I got a big dick. And that's why these black men are getting killed all over the country, messing with white girls. If I was on one white guy, some white dude just recently got charged for shooting his, his daughter's black boyfriend. What did he think he's going to do, dummy? All these dumb black men, everything's just their penis and their scrotums, nutsack. It's just, just think that that's the whole, they, they act like it's a Disney World, like, like it just got invented. And a little bit, almost in the same thing, there's loose-ass, sorry-ass black women who think, you know, the world revolves around their vagina. And it really doesn't. And so this carnal, nasty, uh, screw-all, eat-all, hump-all, <laughs> disease-all uh, way that we've adjusted or adopted as a community, it's going to be the death of many people, and that may be our salvation, that the people who have been brainwashed or are sinners or don't want to be want to be any kind of ethical moral system, then they'll kill themselves off. And maybe when folks start dying and they all get that ass cancer I was talking about, you didn't post that video, Ron. My ass mm-hmm. cancer video. Yeah, it's up on a uh, Poon Buster. Okay, okay, I'm definitely yeah, post it. Start getting ass cancer and dying in two or three years. Mm-hmm then maybe we'll be able to overcome the LGBTQ boycott on real sexual information getting before the public that the most dangerous sex you can have is anal sex. It's deadly. And in fact, there's a guy, I just put it up on my Facebook page, a soft issue looking white dude, went over to New Guinea from Australia, probably tried to get some black sex, probably got it. Mm. Uh, you see him all up on these black men, and he caught typhoid. <laughs> he almost died. They had to fly him back home. He had and typhoid. Elvis, That's like some old school. Dude. <laughs> oh, oh, no, it's not old school. No, no. You, the typhoid is common for people to have anal sex. Oh, okay. I was about typhoid oh, Mary or something like that. Okay. No, okay. no, no, no. It's out here. There's a man, white dude, who's screwing people across seven states, including the state of Tennessee. And all these people that are coming in with typhoid got another one white man's behind. That wasn't 20 years ago. Mm. So typhoid, you can even get polio having anal sex. They're not telling you. Get polio? You. Yeah, there's so much stuff on there. Mm. My goodness. People go to, they go to anal sex. Anal sex. It's, oh, yeah, it's, it's a very <laughs> deadly practice. And they got all these stupid black men thinking and Man, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a, had the little things up there who actually <laughs> stretch each other's behinds out of shape. These folks have pampers and all, want to commit suicide when they're in hospice. I talk to people who work in this, and this is not my opinion. This is what's happening. People really die. Okay? By the way, I'm not happy they die. I'm, you know, I've seen people I cared about. You didn't want them in, and, you know, well, I, this is my life. This is my body. This is my dick. It's my ass. I give it who I want to, right? Give to the person with an eighteen inch thing, and then you need a colostomy. <laughs> and then they don't want you to smell the doodle in the bag when they come around. Oh man, it don't smell that bad. I put some hope in it. Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so and this this is real stuff. I know someone that got a colostomy. I think someone put up. A light bulb or something that broke up and they had to take the button rerouted. <laughs> and 
I didn't ever hate the person for doing that. But did I want to smell their doodle in the bag? No. No, mm. I don't think that's fair. Do you want to smell my doodle in the bag if I had someone break a, a phosphorescent light tube in my behind? <laughs> do you have to smell my doodle in the bag? I left this like that. It's, do, who needs friendship like that, dude? Do you get where I'm coming from? All right, we hear you, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I know it sounds like it's manic, but this is what I see. And so getting all kinds of stuff and hepatitis C. And don't worry, for all the black folks that say, well, I'm not going to get no disease because I'm messing with folks that are clean. I mess with white folks. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there is an HIV AIDS epidemic across rural white America that they're not talking about. And they're telling a lie I've heard before. It's exclusively a dis- heterosexual disease that comes from exchanging noodles, needles, as if folks in Nashville don't have gay people. Now, you're from Tennessee. you got some sissies up in Nashville. Oh, definitely. Well, that's what, exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're up in the Adirondacks and uh, uh, up in the Hamptons. And that's well, well, my age heterosexual. I don't care what it is. I don't want to get a kid in anyway, sure. We're going to see some, some real social fallout. Mm. And I've seen it before. I feel it. I've been talking to Cher about this for years, and I'm watching. And if you saw that thing I sent you, heard, mm. where any cancer is rising most rapidly, we say report. I don't believe it completely among black men and white women. Now, if white men are hitting white women in the booty, you know they're hitting white men in the booty, too. Mm. So anal cancer and throat cancer. I've been talking about this for years, Ron. It's finally just going to the ceiling. And that's why when I hear a nigga, blah, 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 hello. Don't charge me. You don't know what I was doing. <laughs> I just had a baby. They're not going to admit they had throat cancer from eating booty and stuff like that. <laughs> there's there's, there's going to be more people tonsillitis. They're going to find something. To, 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 like they're now all saying people when they get these venereal diseases that they have cancer. I have cancer. He has cancer. Everybody has cancer. You know, they sing the song, I got shoes. You got shoes. All God's children got shoes. I got cancer. You got cancer. All the queers got cancer. Right. They're going to be talking about cancer. And it's all going to be a front. And, uh, and by the way, remember we were talking about the gay birth control pill um, a few years ago? Mm-hmm. Not a, I remember I said it wasn't going to work, and it's a lie. And I'm going to just wait. I know, I know I'm right. There's no way you could take something. Now, I think if you see it on Facebook, there's nothing but two body cases all over for you to get in a class action. It's messing up everything. Let me tell you something. If it breaks your bones and kills your kidney in two, three, four, five years, what are the side effects 10 years from now? Hmm. Are you hearing me? Mm-hmm. Like, if I didn't tell you the people that take the retroviral drugs to fight off the AIDS, the other things that they've got, and they tell you out of, a, out of 340 million people in the United States, they say only 1 million have AIDS. If you believe that, you're out of your mind. <laughs> okay, you think E.T. and Michael Jackson would love this, right? It's no way. It's just one million people. Okay, now check this out. The people that take those retrovirals get cancer because the cells react to the drugs in their body. So now there are all these cancers that people are getting all over the country who who were able to beat the AIDS, but they got the cancer from taking the medications. Are you hearing me? Mm-hmm. So. The retrovirals cause early onset Alzheimer's. So you're going to meet people that are 40 that have Alzheimer's. You're going to meet people that are 40 with arthritis. You're going to meet people that are 30 with arthritis or Alzheimer's. Or you're going to see people that are 20, or I'm sorry, 40, 50 years old that look like they're 70 or 80 because the drugs cause early aging. Like mm. Elijah, you got old all fast. Uh, it causes people to lose their mind and go crazy, all this mental illness. It causes people's internal organs to fail. And, and it, it does, again, it causes bones to break or not form or early osteoporosis. So you're going to have more hunchbacks than the Notre Dame. And this mm. is what this so-called gay revolution spot, nothing 
but pain, death, and destruction. Uh, no, we're not talking about the individual cousin gay that we had, that we love, we grew up with, and we understand Uncle Billy did something that we think. We're talking about a movement that's fully aware that these things will occur, and they're so selfish, they don't talk about it. There's a book that I always recommend people get. If they got some money, brother, they can uh, buy a copy. It costs about $100. One of the supporters that I got from your show, whose name has to be anonymous because he don't want to get in trouble. Mm-hmm. You know how it is, Ron. If people find out the folks help us, people come after them. Yeah. But one of the people that heard me through your show, every now and then they hook me up. And now I have to say that uh, Black Rose has been a very strong supporter. Even if they can't send me a dollar now and then, they just a love. I mean, one of the people, one of the nicest people I've ever met. Mm-hmm. Um, this book is called, Ooh, After the Ball, How America Will Conquer Fear and Hatred of Gays in the 90s, written by Marshall Kirk and Hunter Madsen. And the last chapter of the book, he talks about gay people and how gay people are trifling and how gay people are nasty and I didn't say this. This is what he's saying. Okay, so folk are going to jump on me. And blame me for it. <laughs> I I didn't write this. This is gay. This is like gay son too. Okay. <laughs> okay. Part two is solutions. Hold on. Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Part three. Not in our stars, but in ourselves. And it says, the state of our community, gay pride goeth before fall. Our purpose in writing this unpleasant chapter, and he's talking about how crazy the gay community is. I mean, everything that you say was a stereotype and homophobia and be punished for, these gay Sun Tzu, they're gurus. These are like their Plato, Aristotle, Aristophanes, right? So on. Mm-hmm. I, I'm reading the real. This is a hundred dollar book. You could pay up to a thousand dollars to get this book. I got mine for ninety four dollars. And he talks about one part is called lies, lies, all lies. That's on page two eighty. But listen to this one. The next section is a rejection of morality on two eighty nine. Mm-hmm. The next section is narcissism and self-centered behavior. That's on 295. Self-indulgent, self-destruction. That's the next section. Indulging our privates in public. Misbehavior in bars. Misbehavior in relationships. Emotional blockage and anesthesia. He's talking about drugs there. Reality denial, nonsensical thinking, and myomythomania. Look at this. Gay political fascism and the oppression of PC. If we said that folk would jump all over, you hate, you judge, you hate. These folks who are into their community are saying every problem I've described earlier, they're saying is, this is a problem. That's their book. That's their damn Bible. I read it. That was, <laughs> you know how Mark would always quote people's sources back to them? So I quote their source. What What do your gay leaders say? <laughs> they say I'm right. They say we're right. And they say they're wrong. <laughs> so if they put this book out and their fear about self-destructive behavior... It is coming to a head. 40, 20, plus 20, 40. Remember, AIDS took off in 1980, and they found AIDS in 1981 and named it. Mm. We're in a new generation, and a whole lot of stuff is going to begin to fall apart. You didn't see the Native American woman who wrote some changing hip-hop music into a Canadian indigenous language. She died at 26. If you start looking... You're going to start seeing a lot of stars and notable people that are dying quickly. I remember this before. First it was one or two, and then it was dozens of them. Just disappearing. 
understand it. Hmm? And maybe this is going to have to hit us down in Atlanta and some other places for us to be able to talk about black people getting their stuff together because these folks, the Boule and other folks, have hijacked our community, took us down the wrong path. They've given us butt blocks instead of the tools to freedom. And they've given us Democrats instead of uh, real empowerment welfare instead of self determination and wholesome and, and, and so and, and being holistically safe. And so this thing is falling apart. That's what you feel. That's what you see. Um you might see a landslide victory for Trump. Not that I like any of the parties. I just like us, God and I like humanity. Uh, that includes everyone. I'm not mad at folks based on race or color how you treat me, how you relate to my group, and how you relate to my God, too, I guess. So I'm going to stop there. I know you have something to do, and this thing went long. And I oh, you got too much information. Questions. But you don't ask me questions like I go off on the tangent. I'm, I'm, right? I'm trying to learn, man. You're a professor. I'm trying to do that. Part of the conversation with me offline. We have to do this so it's tighter. Well, well you know what? I, we, we'll work on that. I, I'm definitely going to uh, look forward to visiting, going out to the East Coast, going back to my traveling and stuff in the next year. So I definitely want to connect with you. And but sometimes it's hard to oh. read people on the telephone. You know, like, don't want to interrupt people. It's kind of hard to figure out some no, things. It's not hard to catch me on the telephone. Um, typically, if you call me, I call you back. And and I I that, I'm talking about like, in terms of like having conversations now. You don't want to cut nobody off when they're talking, you know, when they pausing or what. That's what I'm talking about now. You, you're very accessible. If they call, I mean, they can talk to me another time, but I'm going to just say this to you. By the way, I sent you. Did you get that stuff from that sex shop in Baltimore? Oh, to, uh, you said to my email or messenger yeah. or text? I, I, I sent it, we all be. I, I, I know you said me something about grant. I appreciate you sending that grant opportunity. Uh, I'm definitely going to yeah, apply for it. You know, with the grant stuff, whatever, I mm-hmm. know some folks. So, they said, we, we're we going to come through this. We just have to, there may be, I don't know, sometimes it's not money that someone has. Sometimes it's a contact or mm-hmm. whatever. Like that brother I wanted to connect you to, I think the brother that does stuff who's from D.C. that does stuff in Denmark, uh, you can hook up with him, and he's mm-hmm. real cool. Um, if you don't have his number, this is why I just need to chat with you frequently. I mean, periodically. Um, I'm going to give you a number uh, because you need you need to meet this brother. This is a good brother, man, and he's a filmmaker, and he knows mm-hmm. how to edit and all this other kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to send you this dude's number now. Let me see if I can remember it. Look at it. Um, well, why are you why are you looking up his number? You know, um, Damon Dash. Just to jump back on him mm-hmm. quickly and briefly. Um, you know, he's being sued for fifty million dollars because the okay. photographer um, allegedly came to his home. And he came into the room. She was supposed to go there to film for a project. Mm-hmm. And she came into his home. She she was supposed to stay there. She stayed there overnight. And Damon Dash came into the bedroom and sexually assaulted her. And then he and his wife allegedly kept her camera equipment, her filming equipment. Um, she had some pictures of uh, Mary J. Blige and... Sean uh, Combs and Queen Latifah, MC Light, uh, Lenny Kravitz, Russell Simmons, mm-hmm. Lauren Hill. Now, keep in mind, Damon Dash with his dirty, low-down ass is on this new Surviving R. Kelly Part 2 crap. See, mm. people can talk about this R. Kelly voodoo, and I believe that is true because everybody that keeps trying to come against him some kind of way they get in a charge, they go down for something, they are exposed. Mm. People need to watch out. When you're trying to come come against someone, and your hands are dirty, you have skeletons in your closet, you need to sit down and be quiet. And that's mm. what Damon Dash should have done, and now his ass is getting sued. 
fifty oh, million dollars, and I'm glad. He should have so said you, his So you say you know you, you, you know he did it. You feel like he's guilty of that. He probably did. He's so sleazy. Yeah, so what's your take on the Survivor R. Kelly stuff? Like, you know, I know you somebody think it's a curse or people to try to go get R. Kelly. What was your take on the whole thing? I, I guess it's supposed to be a documentary, right? And uh, have you seen the first part of that? Like the the first couple of shows. I did that? watch the first one. I refused to watch that second one. That's okay. pure crap. Um, from the beginning, I felt like this was just an attack on black men. Mm-hmm. Okay, period. Um, they've come after Tupac. They've come after. Yeah. Uh, we can just go down the line. Yep. Uh, it was Chris Brown. Um, mm-hmm trying to set him up with a fake rape in Paris. Yeah. Uh, now they're coming after Cuba Gooden Jr. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's, this is just an assault to criminali- criminalize black men. And we've gone through this. Ida B. Wells talked about this. Mm-hmm. Black men are always supposed to be portrayed as this sexual deviant. And that's what this is all about. It's not about our Kelly uh, uh, sleeping with young girls. Kelly, all of these people sleep with young girls. That's what rock stars sing songs about. Their hits have yeah. been about uh, yeah. sleeping with young girls. So this is nothing new. That's right. So it's not about that. This is about bringing down black men, and that's what we're standing on. It's not just trying to support R. Kelly. No, that was a representation of black men that they're trying to bring down. That's yeah. what we're standing on. So that's my take on it. And all, like I said, all of these people that keep coming after R. Kelly, as you see, they keep crumbling, crumbling. That police chief and um, the commissioner in Chicago, mm. now his ass fired. You out of a job. <laughs> yeah, I ain't think about it like it's that. Domino, oh, yeah. wow. It's just a domino effect. Even Fox, what they, that Fox lady? Oh, this that is, Fox lady. Yeah. Oprah, she'll be the next one. Her and Gail, they going well, you know, down. We also got that school in uh, South Africa, right? Where the girls got abused sexually. Yes. By so there's all the guys attacking Oprah, but I'm saying she's friends with Harvey Weinstein and the guy down in Brazil, the John of God guy, the guy she endorsed, the John of God dude that he's in prison. I guess he's facing what he's serving about to serve 19 or 20 years in prison down in Brazil for sex trafficking and stuff and doing things for babies and things of that nature. But she endorsed this guy. She interviewed him back in 2012, endorsed him and everything. And now she distanced mm-hmm. herself from John of God. Absolutely. Yeah, she's going down. Yeah. Uh, hashtag mute Oprah, no bra. Um, mm-hmm. She's out of here. I mean, she, she's done. And this is all the setup. This, this is the setup for her downfall. Um, subtract her support, so when they bring her down, nobody's going to support her. This is their playbook. Mm-hmm. We've seen this played out many times before. It's, it happened to Cosby. His support system was taken away from him, so nobody wanted to support him. We supported OJ. Then when OJ turned on us again, no support for you. So when your ass went to jail, we didn't care. But, you know, the, the O.J. is kind of like he's an interesting case, though. I don't know what the, you know, like, it's hard to hate O.J. for me. I know that he was no Ben Brown or Muhammad Ali. hate O.J. O.J. is hateable. He don't care about black folks. You know, I mean, I just think he just care about O.J. I mean, no, no, no. Black men have been getting shot dead over his whore-ass wife and all the drugs that he was using in California. Black people are being punished collectively over the O.J. Simpson case. It's despicable. OJ, um, OJ should have gone somewhere. He un- <laughs> he understood that black men collectively would be punished for the, the the gangsters that killed his wife because folks wanted him to be guilty. Had he been smart to think about someone other than his penis, his money, his uh, fetish for white women, he's selfish. I don't like mm-hmm. any of these people. In fact, it would have been better off for us had he gone to jail. It would have been better off for OJ. It would have been some black awakening. Let me tell you, Larry Pinkney, I don't know if you've had him on your show, but you have a way to contact him. If you don't, you call me. Mm-hmm. Larry Pinkney and them tried to get OJ to support the black cause back in the 60s. OJ saw anything black, he'd run. OJ does not care about us. 
and we need to stop saving people in that forest, their collateral damage, their roadkill mm-hmm. on the white supremacy highway. We keep rolling. When you see roadkill, you don't pull up and say, oh, this animal deserves a burial. You say, damn, I'm glad it's not stuck on my car. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I, you know, OJ thing, I had talked to a football players from back in the day who worked with Jim Brown, the guys who played in the your, Super Your voice is my fault. You got to okay. front of your voice. Can okay, you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Stop I, I, doing I, that. Yeah. I talked to football players who played with OJ back in the day, you know, played the first Super Bowls, and these guys, they and they, they worked with Jim Brown when he was doing the economic empowerment thing. And they said, you know, we never expect OJ to be one of us like that, but we respected him because that's who he was. Like, he was himself, he was never about that. Like you say, he was never about that race thing or about doing things for black folks in that capacity, but he was a likable guy. According to him, he was a likable guy. You know, he has, like, a, a certain personality that gets him over with people. Even today, yeah, but, you know. But, but there comes a point where your likable personality comes at an expense to your people. It's not mm-hmm. fair. It's something mm-hmm. for nothing. Mm-hmm. This is the same disagreement I was having with the brother the other day. I didn't say that O.J. wasn't likable. But then again, I don't like Coon, so O.J. isn't likable to me. <laughs> I've never <laughs> liked O.J. So I'll never. And also, I would probably want to be on some sponsorship program, o- OJ, when you talk to black entertainers, they always have a different take than order because it's some business connection. Mm. OJ may have an opportunity for them, so we don't want to say nothing bad about OJ. And what you find is the same way when Monique was on the judges' show, and they, they, they can't be critical of anyone. So if they talk about Lizzo, well, you know, Lizzo, she's young and she's got to find everything's always you can't have. It's Hollywood. You can't have mm-hmm. absolute rights or wrongs because I may not get a job or a contract or an opportunity if I have a strong stance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you know who has a strong stance? The Nazis, the white mm-hmm. supremacists, the Klan, mm-hmm. the Aryan Say Brotherhood. That. They all have a strong stance. And by us having no stance, we're weak. All these mm-hmm. people promote weakness in our community, including cool preachers and folks like I Am the Warriors, you know, T.D. Jakes, who he even oh. looked funny when he had hair. He looks even strange without, I don't know, just you'll never hear these preachers talk about self-defense or certain, they, they won't do it. So our people are always being disarmed in every conceivable way so we can be violated and victimized. So I, I'm not surprised. I don't like sports too much. I don't respect black athletes in general. They become an embarrassment. They are all, a lot of them are druggies that want to be laid up with white women and leave the community, but they want us to buy their shirts and shit. I could care less. I mean, good riddance to almost all of them, unless they were doing something. Now, there's some good athletes, but... They're coons. And um, Mm. being an athlete, being a black star and entertainer is a way to be different from other black folks. That's why so many black people want to be in entertainment, so they can be a star. Man, the white people really like us. Look, they're clapping for this fake world that you somehow will not be like the other people in your community if you become wealthy or famous. And that's the big drive. Everybody wants to be a star. Why? Because it's so hard being black. It would be a hell of a lot easier being black if we focused in on making black great as a collective instead of an individual being famous or Mm well-known. Because at the end of the day, like, what's his name, Wycliffe John, I dogged that dude up on Twitter. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I went after him. Yes, I dogged him. I said he's... I wish the police had whipped his ass in California when they arrested him. He's a coon, a Haitian coon to sell out his own people. The least the cops could have done was stop his ass and make him tremble. These kinds of people um, are narcissistic. They only care about themselves. Well, you know, I don't want to make a statement against pedophilia because I don't want to alienate my fans. So in other words, I've got to go along with every awful thing that's done to most black people because I might get a dollar out of it. Mm. Other people don't do that. Other people, let me tell you, in Kansas or one of those western states, they were in a meatpacking factory, and these illegals weren't being treated right by the white men there. They went on strike. 
they got a raise and their treatment improved. You know, goddamn well, if there's a situation where black men were being mistreated, maybe one or two black men would stand up and all the others would try to sell that person out to get a few more crumbs for themselves. At some point, this has to be confronted as a weakness that must be punished. Nothing short of punishing traitors. It's the beginning of freedom. It starts in-house. I know a lot of other folks, oh, well, we got to go after the other people. No, you need to go after self first. Let me tell you something. Those Mexican folks knew to go on strike because their community would have punished them to punk them out. They all were being collectively mistreated for being foreigners, so they collectively stood together, and they get treated better. They've got more rights than we do as illegals because we've got so much scum and so many traitors and cowards, and nobody can ever risk anything because I'm standing up for other black people. But please buy my books or my records or my tapes. To go. I want something from you, but nothing will come to you from me. We have an anti-social contract, and it has to be broken. And the people who perpetuate it have to be punished. All of a sudden, things would change. If Oprah Winfrey knew that a couple million people, we could do this, we could start this with your platform that we want own removed from our cable package. That's a movement right there, Oprah Winfrey off. Mm. We want own taken off our package. If it has Oprah Winfrey shit on it, we don't want it. We'll just cut our whole thing. Let me tell mm. you something. We went to Comcast and said, if you don't get that fat bitch off of our package, <laughs> we won't watch people anymore. We start having people Trying calling. People. You know what? Comcast will say, well, Oprah, you need to say something. I mean, the black people are so angry with us because of you. <laughs> we put you. We thought that this was going to be okay. All we have to do is demand, hey, Oprah Winfrey, since you do so much stuff on black, and how many black men work for your damn company? If it's not 15%, your ass is going out of business. Mm. How do we divest? Where's the stock hold, stockholders meeting? And we can get a whole bunch of black dudes to come in and put Noxima on their face, come in as fat black women with pillows on the thing that protest Oprah. Oh, my God. <laughs> it will set this thing off. Ron, you you know you know that uh, uh, Dr. Short he despises fat women. He just despises fat. fat. I don't like he despises fat women. He does not like fat people. Period. Wow. Period. It's not healthy. Gluttony is bad. It's ridiculous. <laughs> he's fat shame. He's not <laughs> fat shame, Randy. Fat. Randy, stop fat shaming. No, Reverend Barber. Used to say, I mean, let me tell you something. When a cannibal looks at Reverend Barber, they think they've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> hey, Lord, have mercy. Well, um, Oprah Winfrey, I'm just saying, Oprah, we could turn Oprah out. And all the people have to do is start saying, we want Oprah off of our cable. Do you put her on there? See, it's not that Oprah is so much Oprah's size. We know that Oprah deep down inside is still that little <laughs> fat girl who was a prostitute when she was young. And she's never really left that, no matter, because if she were, had moved on, she wouldn't be attacking so many black folk. Mm. If we gave Oprah hell, she started coming on Oprah, and like Michael Jordan was catching hell. You know, people went after Michael Jordan because he's a man. We, we, we black men, we can hate someone with the penis. And then, <laughs> we have a problem with the person with a vagina. Well, maybe I could slide up in there. Even when they don't want the person. I don't understand that. I mean, can't there be a bad person with a vagina like a trans woman? But black men, you know, the black men will pause. Because oh, oh. she's still a woman, although she's got a sheet on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can't take a position. I mean, sorry, we, sorry, oh. punk, black men. Anyway, if Oprah were to face a commercial attack, we find a sponsor for OWN and just go ask them, I hate you because you have Oprah Winfrey, and we're going to make the stores take your stuff out. Amazon's going to have to get, we, won't, we don't want OWN. Oprah Winfrey would have to have a meeting with people and say, you know, people are really angry with us. They're coming at us because of you. Their white allies are not going to risk anything for her butter biscuit, either ass or not. 
I said, Oprah, you need to make amends with the colored people because they're really angry with us. Oh. And you know, what, you know what Oprah will do? What? Oprah will come out. She'll do something crazy like have corn rolls on and have a press conference. <laughs> and you know what? And, and all the little coon conscious community people say, Oprah's come home. Oprah has her hair natural. You know, it doesn't take anything to impress her. Black like, well, Oprah's got her hair natural. She's coming home. <laughs> and, the press <laughs> and the press conference, yeah, it's, it's true. And, and she'd be in a gated community, and she'd probably get a couple of black kids from the homeless shelter to dress them up so it looks like someone black likes her. But mm. Oprah can be made to be humble. And the other thing that people can do is interview interview Oprah Winfrey's family. Get civil Oprah Winfrey's family to tell Oprah, knock this bull off. It's not that hard. I have a friend who can who would dog Oprah on your show and say, Oprah, we're ashamed to stop embarrassing us black folks hate us because of you. That's all a relative? Well, could we a clock is her cousin. Mm. Oh, this is clock, huh? Wow. Come here, Clark's first cousin. I know two of Oprah's first cousins. Oprah's from Mississippi. If we can find her people, they can't mm. stand Oprah. Get some of Oprah's family. Come on, say, bitch, we need you. When you come to family barbecue, we can put you in. And she ain't put Clark, Miss Khalil Clark in the Legends Ball, which is interesting, from 2005. Say that again? We had a, a Legends Ball. Remember when Oprah had all the... Black woman icons, the legends, the living legends, go to her home. Mm -hmm. and she, you know, she didn't even invite her cousin, who's a legend, you know, all right. Yeah, because um, Oprah, Oprah has lied. Oprah, Oprah's father, first and foremost, is one of those unsung people. Tw about 20% of black kids are raised by single fathers in this country. Mm -hmm. You'll never hear anyone praise single black fathers. Oprah Winfrey's father raised his daughter when nobody else was trying to. Oprah's never said, my father loved me. My father at least tried. She wasn't outside in the cold. He wasn't beating the hell out of her. He wasn't humping on her. He couldn't be 100% dead, right? Mm -hmm. But he's a black man, so we need to make him be a monster. That way I justify the coffee puncher and me stab the black man in the back because my father... Right? And mm -hmm. mind you, it's unusual for a mother to give a daughter to the father. Not when you have a, a grandmother to everybody. It means that that man must have been very good with children. And Oprah must have been very difficult for her family. For the aunts and the aunts and the mother and the grandmother to send her with the dad. You're a southerner. Isn't that unusual? No. Yeah. So maybe the dad had something to offer that the mother didn't offer. But Oprah dogs mama and daddy. Usually you like one parent more than the other, and it seems as if you got into college and got to do the things that you wanted to do, being in your dad's house, you couldn't have been that. It wasn't a total monster. Hmm. But Oprah needed to remake herself. She needed to be a victim. And she knew that she could appeal to the, you know, my father was no good. He hurt. He raped me. <laughs> Something like that. And, and it's sad. I, I went to the elite school and I used to watch people just, there was a way all you had to do was say one thing, well, black men this and everyone, oh, yes. But of course. And anyone that knows, White men are molesting and a dead beating. Like Hunter Biden had $156 million and didn't give $1 in child support. Wow. To his $156 million? You realize how easy it would be to get that woman a million dollars and make her disappear with $156 million? Mm. Is that unreasonable? Think about that. You have $156 million. You've got a child. You haven't sent a penny in seven years. You have a minimum of $156 million. I think you could take care of a child that you didn't even want. Yeah. 
And a lot of these white men have 10 times the money that black men have, but not 20 times, and don't pay any child support and don't lose their driver's license. They don't go to jail. None of that. Will Oprah ever do a show on that? No. Uh-uh. And so there are other things that people could do to protest to Oprah. They could send Oprah white sex toys. They could just send her one every day. Just everybody just send it <laughs> to the part where she'd have to go to the boat. Like, Please don't send it. You know. Or send a little piece of the carpet. I mean, just it, it would be to make her know we're mad at her, but we want her off of our package. We don't want her anymore. That would that would that would make, and we'd give her some conditions, and and we know she wouldn't agree to that. That for her to be honest about her biography, stop bashing her family. Um, and by the way, the tabloid magazines would eat it up, and we we have to do this not just to hurt anybody black that tries to bring us down. She'll still be a billionaire, but she'll be a billionaire humble. They humbled Mike Milliken, the Jews humbled them. They, um, Maddow, not Maddow, uh, Madoff, the one who stole money from his fellow Jews, they broke him. You know, when we see a black person have money, it doesn't matter what they've done to hurt other black people because we're so carnal and materialistic. We're just glad to see someone black have it, even if they cut all our throats to get it. And until we get out of that satanic approach to things, we're dead. Um, trust me, violate Jefferson Davis, violate Elvis Presley, violate any white icon, violate any ethnic groups and watch them come for you. Our people, there's nothing that we'll stake our lives for. In fact, I'll say this is in particular, fake church-going black folks, 99% of them won't even stake their lives for Jesus. <laughs> I would to God, we, there was something that we would fight for, we'd stand up for. I don't see it. When our children disappear, do we fight for anything? When our organs are harvested, is there a movement to stop our organs from being harvested? When they kill our women when they're having babies, is it, there's nothing that makes us say we're going to stop it. Nothing. And that points to an absence of God in the hearts and minds of the people because we used to do it when we had a concept of absolute rights and wrongs. There's a God, there's a right in the universe, there's a wrong in the universe, and light stands up to darkness. It doesn't try to hang out and roll the blunt with darkness. So, anyway, let me see. Oh, my God. It's after 3 o'clock. Yeah, time to show it. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. (laughs) We just have to do this again. But um, maybe we should do an end of the year thing in retrospect. Now, that would be fun. Yeah, that's well, really I think we should do that. We should yeah. do that. <laughs> we have to do, talk about 1919. And, man, oh, my God, now that would be fun to talk about the Equality Act. And um, I don't know. I, uh, I'm still trying to do this thing, Hurt. I was going to, like, do this thing with Val where I was going to be like John Lewis making an obscene phone call to <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> Hello, this is John Lewis. I'm looking for the most powerful man in the world. <laughs> Can you imagine? And it's like... Oh, I hope she agree to that. I mean, she into that breakfast club type stuff. You know, John, and, and, and say, look, look, John, you can't be my lover. I'm not into men. Said you don't know until you try it. Your problem with Donald is that you do not practice equality. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you imagine if I had going with Donald Trump on the phone? I says, John, you don't attract me. I mean, Dr. King looked better in his casket. I just I hate to say that to you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you are a real treasure. <laughs> tre- Donald, Donald Trump and John Lewis talking. Is it, and, and John, I don't even know what you what 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 is it? And jumps. I'd like to try to say good and not say good. You're kind of scrumptious. And now okay. you can pull mine. <laughs> and have a talk to and have John Lewis and, and Donald Trump Parker. 
Look, John, this is a, John, you haven't been nice to me. You haven't supported me since I've been here. You didn't come to my inauguration. You made everybody know that you were no-show. Now you want to call me and hook up with me. <laughs> I, I don't think I could really do that because I'm too much in the world. I like women. It's, it's just natural, John. It's natural. <laughs> you know, it's, I think I'm the one you're not natural, John. You let those cops beat you on the bridge so many times until I think they must have beat the straight out of you. <laughs> and can you see him and John having a conversation? I do. And, and it would be fun. And, and so, you know, Dr. King, aside from letting people beat him, he had a lot of women. I really liked that about him. He knew how to dress, he could speak really good, and he had a lot of women. But Dr. King, you know how to really, I mean, he wasn't as smooth as me because he doesn't have the money. He didn't have a yacht. And, and, and nobody burns crosses in front of my towers. It's never going to happen. Mm. <laughs> Can you imagine the burning of something like me down in Dr. King? And the other thing is, if I had to get shot, I wouldn't get shot at a budget motel. I just, Dr. King was a Nobel Prize winner. <laughs> I know he cared for the people, but he should have stayed at the holiday. He <laughs> 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 would have a whole different take on that. And it's like, thank God. <laughs> Just. Mm. So, knock, knock. This game is stupid, John. I don't want to play it. I'm never going to join your party. And, you know, you don't look good with the bald head. You should ask Maxine for a win. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't know what you want. I mean, you know, you push for the, the, the crime bill of Biden. I do criminal justice reform and let some of your people out. I mean, John, think about it. Some of those guys did not, you could sleep with. You didn't even think about it from a gay matrix perspective. Instead, you just wanted to say no because it was my idea. It's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Can you imagine having this negotiation? And have a drink. Wow. And John would say, well, Dar, you were never in the movement. We would work together and sit at the table of humanity, brotherhood, and break bread. And the gentlemen, we would respect one another, John. I mean, but, 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 Trump, you're so prejudiced. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's fine. That's fine. Can you imagine saying you're so prejudiced, Trump? You don't like women. You don't like the gays. You don't like the lesbian. You don't like the black. You don't like the Latino, the Latina. You don't like the illegal, the Muslims, Muslim. Donald, you have to know everyone. This is America. Set the country free. And pull your seat back. I'm coming over. Tell me I need to move over. We should overcome. I'm coming home. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, Dr. Shaw, can you tell the people how we can reach you or connect with you? Uh, well, how do they reach me? They can call me through the office number. That's 443-833. Uh, what's that? That's seven eight six eight. Or I, for folks who like, because you know we're working against human trafficking and all this stuff now, along with the political campaign. We'll have another conversation on that. Mm -hmm. My email is wrandyshort at gmail dot com. I'm in LinkedIn. I'm in Twitter. I'm drs one. And that's the way you can address me from here on out when you don't want to get into trouble and it's a mess with your algorithms. You can call me DRS1. DRS1, okay. DRS1, <laughs> at Twitter, DRS1. And and then, of course, I'm Randy Short and Facebook. There's, there's a Randy Short Twitter. I don't know if I'm using that one because I'm not supposed to have that one. So, anyway. So you can the app, too. Oh, yeah, and the cash app is Dr. Randy Short, D-R, Randy, 
Short. A capitalized C. R and S and Randy and Short. Of course, the D is capitalized. And, yeah, and, and, and let me see. And, yeah, my PayPal is the W Randy Short at Gmail. So, yes, the people that have been donating, I have to say this to you, Brother Ron. Between you and Ashira and my fellowship, we've been doing stuff fighting against the pedophilia and all. I don't know if I even taught you about that, that we blocked the legalization of prostitution in D.C. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't even talk to you. That's another conversation. We'll do that at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But people dropping small donations, they help. Believe Mm -hmm. it or not. Every now and then there are people who just drop you whatever, and it pays this or, like, you get a new phone. I'm going to start doing podcasts. In fact, if you want, I can send my stuff to your platform. I'm going to start doing stuff, doing more. I've got the capacity to do it. Um, and to see how we can do this, because we need this thing called United Black Artists, like the United Artists that the Jews mm-hmm. did, mm-hmm. what we needed. And that way, everybody puts their own stuff, but we help each other do it as a collective. So let me see, let's do this again. I'm Randy Short, I think 1965, or Randy 1965 in Instagram. And so on the Instagram, Randy Short, uh, Randy Lancaster Short, those are in Facebook. I'm uh, in LinkedIn at Dr. W. Randy Short. And I think, yeah, more or less, that's how you can catch me. And uh, and I use other things. So I'm in Messenger and all that other stuff. So Messenger, Facebook, we're doing all of that. And there will be, I have a website, I'm going to, I've neglected it, but I need to get on it. It's called Fighting Black, and I want to start working on that maybe in February. And people need to be aware. I have a book, and it's talking about religion and slavery. It'll, it's going to be a $29.95 book. Oh, my God. So I'm waiting to see the galleys. So it's happening. So eventually... Hmm. And I do have a, I think I'm Randy Short. I've got a YouTube channel. I just don't use it that much. I'm going to probably use a little bit more this coming year. So I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on uh, all the, most of them, LinkedIn. And uh, and there are many ways to, to, to hit. But, yes, definitely have folks. Drop me a piece, drop me a letter, drop me an invitation to do their platform or show. And uh, we can have a whole lot of fun. And um, it is, I look forward to that. So did I yeah, answer that? I hope so because I'm getting silly. That's probably why my John Lewis picked up. Yeah, you did a good can job. I we more, can I do one more John Lewis? Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Short. I would like to thank the distinguished gentleman from New York for giving me his time. Back in 1957, the court issued a decision. I remember that decision. They told us that we would be going to integrated schools. It didn't happen for me. Now is the time for us to make a decision. Now, let us set the country free. I, re- I yield the rest of my time to this thing with gentleman from New York. <laughs> <laughs> and since the big role, you got anything you want to add? You can tell information. Did that throw, did, I, I need to know. Did, that, did I get him? Yeah, you good. You good. You got him. Uh, <laughs> so I, I mean, I heard him in person. I, I've met him a couple of times before. <laughs> Yeah, you got the other words down, Pat. I'm oh, oh, good. But you should tell him that. You got to put all this stuff on me. I have John Lewis and, and uh, Barack Obama. Can you imagine? Oh, Can you like this? Barack, come over and see me. I'm, I need someone. Okay. Uh, Michelle, can you take me to the hospital? The John's here. I don't know. Maybe I can cheer him up. Give him a hand job. The day we have a freedom. I think he he likes me. He's the only black person that likes me. I'm going to go over. We have a lot in common, except he's too short for. Me. He's 
it's just a millionaire two or three times. Mm. You know, I, I like I like my men like my money, white and tall. Anyway, <laughs> so let me go over and see. So, John, to put you on hold for a second, you don't mind, Michelle. See, John, between you and I, I'd rather be with you than her. You don't demand much. Mm-hmm. And can... <laughs> mm, that's great. I mean, no, you're good. You're good. I'm going to get in trouble. And can you imagine Donald say, Hey, Obama, I take your call to John. I'm going to put it out on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you did that thing to call me. I'm going to get you back, digger. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to learn respect oh. some white people in this country I don't care if you're half white I'm going to beat the black half off of you it'll be a lot of fun oh, anyway we'll of fun. Some gold, but definitely have some folks in fact again I think that we all be a community in particular there have been some folks who genuinely they have no idea those of us who speak up and stand up, and trust me, you got to check your email. I need your help, John. There's a, a, a $35 million sex trafficking ring I need your help to bust up. Mm. When you mess with people's money and you stand up for black folks, you make you make boule coons and you make white folks mad. And mm. trust me, if I tried to work in Starbucks or Burger King or anywhere other than start my own LLC, which I will have within two weeks, <sighs> trying to work in this economy, you're blackballed completely, mm-hmm. completely. I've been asked to work with a sister who got beaten half to death by the police and the, all these things, you know, that we do wrong. Folks have no idea. Each time you stand up or you help someone, you make enemies with powerful people. Yeah. Like I think I told you, we threw the gauntlet down and prevented them from demolishing, at least thus far, Cab Calloway's house, mm-hmm. but we've made major enemies who want to jack us up. I'm talking about mob-connected people. Yeah, I know it's Baltimore. I know. <laughs> and so people need to understand that um, when they do something, it may seem small, but it's very, very helpful. Um, if certain people hook me up in a couple ways, it means that one from having a VPN. I think I need to give... I was using Ashira's VPN. In fact, Ashira may put me back on her VPN. That way we can do research and do stuff that folks don't know it's you. They literally trace you and find out who asked this question, then they come after you because they find out you investigated them. There's so mm-hmm. few black people that stand up until it's very easy to pinpoint people who are not going along with the program. And it, it sounds like begging is not. Uh, the Jewish companies and corporations and not for profits constantly raise. Southern poverty law constantly raises. People like you, Ron, and Darren Muhammad and other people that I know, irritated Virginia and so forth, we need to raise it. Yeah. Because uh, the NAACP is not going to do it. The Urban League is not going to do it. The Congressional Black Circus won't do it. Urban Greed won't do it. Scam won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> the National Asshole Network <laughs> will not do it. <laughs> if we don't do it, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. And by the way, it's growing. I want to tell you that I should have, by March, a coalition of of people between D.C., Baltimore, maybe a few other cities, Richmond, Harrisburg, mm-hmm. uh, Philadelphia, that will be fighting against uh, eugenics, racial uh, discrimination, human trafficking, as well as um, challenging certain churches, the leadership to man up or be embarrassed. But it just takes resources to do it. And yeah. I have to thank my mother who was down here, were it not for family and friends like the Shira, Black Rose, and others, I wouldn't be able to do it, nor would you. So mm-hmm. I want to say that this has been a banner year of people um, supporting us. We're even looking at something that's crazy. Get ready to laugh. I think we might force them to close the entire school system down in a couple of cities because the water's poison. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Um, I'm hoping to see what I can do about that. How do you like that? So, believe it or not, um, when I think about it, the people who backed us, we fought the uh, them hijacking the Civil Rights Act. Remember I was telling you about that? Mm-hmm. See how it stalled, but remember who kick-started saying, hell no. Mm. They were on their way to legalizing pimping, brothel-owning, uh, sex purchases, and all of that, and basically opened the door to pedophilia in D.C., and we sh- we stopped them. And we stopped them from knocking Cab Cavalry's house down. And we've done some other things. We've exposed lead poisoning in D.C. Uh, and uh, we'll do more. And that's that's on a shoestring. So when people send stuff, I had one dude send me 10. I says, you have no idea. Thank you for 10. Mm-hmm. I, I can actually do something with 10. <laughs> Ten may pay for me to have a, a third phone number for a month. You know, you do this stuff through uh, GoDaddy, whatever. It, yeah. It's not like we're trying to do it highbrow, but you need to know. I have use of an office in D.C. I'm going to have use of an office in Baltimore. Ah, wow. So I'm going to go from just talking about Coon Busters to doing it, and I even have a part, and I just sent you his phone number, a documentary filmmaker that will work with us on demand if we had the capacity to work with him. Do you get me? All this, oh, something else. We helped get the sister released from jail from the FBI. Remember that? Um, we also did what we could do for Roger Stone, and we're still working that. And, and that's a white person. So that's a freebie, but we've been... We've been doing some things, as well as we helped a lot just this running for office. And uh, so it's, that's a small capacity. And so, I, again, I want to thank my fellowship called the uh, Salt and Liberation Temple. Uh, we have a small fellowship, about mm, um, a core of five to ten people. And are sure it's part of it, but uh, well, actually, it's more like seven or eight, ten. And but the key people, and we've been doing church work with a very small number of people who are tired of going to churches that don't do anything in the community. So, uh, in fact, I tell you this now, stop. I need your help because I've got a document to share with you, and that we may topple the uh, government of a major city on the East Coast with some information on corruption. Would you help? I mean, anything's possible. Well, I'm just saying, if I have proof that someone is making deals for someone to get millions of dollars unlawfully, uh, if you, if I send you pictures of it, you put it up a lot with the story, it'll help move it around. I, I believe that we can topple a government on the East Coast. It would really be good, and it will help <laughs> free up some black people. I can't say where. I just want you to say yes, and I'll leave you alone. I'll let you go. I'm just, this is the kind of stuff we've been doing. By the way, we forced one of the city agencies to give a license to a business owned by a friend of mine. And, oh, I'll do one more. We got a grant, dude, to wash clothes for homeless kids through the Washington Redskin Foundation. Of course, I had to uh, use uh, the local media to force them to give up the money they didn't want to give to black kids. See why I <laughs> so I had to hide. If someone found it was me, they made said no. You understand how it is? Black folk have no idea. that You're going to have to fight for everything. And a lot of people, you'd be amazed, blacks in positions that won't do anything for their own. And it makes so much more for people to do with very little. As for folks who are still giving money to these coon preachers and the NAACP, they need to start sending money to we all be, to state of the city in Baltimore, to dry bones, to... Um, 
sisters like Tisha Forrester or sisters like Elaine Riddick. By the way, that's moving forward in Atlanta. So this is going to be a powerful year. Let me get off of here. Love and peace to everybody. And, oh, uh, yeah, definitely not short. Yeah, we got to do an end of the year. And that way, you know, I have a chance. That we could just do one at a time. And, of course, you know, um, anyway, let me stop. Peace. Well, good night. We love you, man. That's a short. And if it's the Black Star, you got anything to add or good? Hmm? Peace and love. And as we transition into the new year, I wish everyone prosperity and peace and joy. I received that. Uh, well, we love you all madly. Y'all have a great night and a happy ending to the 2019. Everybody, this is Brother Ron. I am asking you all to do me a big favor. Think about supporting the We All Be movement. Your donation is tax deductible. The We All Be Group Incorporated is a recognized 501c3. And I'm just asking you all because I want to keep on bringing y'all quality work uh, through the way that I know how to do best. And uh, I'm going to sing my praises and toot my horn. A lot of y'all would not help to dig Gregory until Brother Ron brought him on the We All Be platform, until that Django review we did. Y'all seen another side of Judge Joe Brown, and Judge Joe Brown's message has been amplified. But it was We All Be that brought Judge Joe Brown to y'all back in 2014. And so many others, and we covered so many things. So help us out so we can help you all. Peace. <laughs>